you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed For as long as you continue to embrace the person of the Holy Spirit, for as long as you continue to be childlike enough and allow his word to change you, I give you a guarantee. It's a guarantee. Your life will surprise you. It's true. It's true. It's true. The system for the lifting of men in the kingdom will never change. It will never be uniquely constructed just because of you. What you think about it or don't think about it makes no difference. The way, you see, God does not align to our terms. No. We are the ones who will humble ourselves and align to his ways. Are we together? If at all God is merciful, he stretches his hands to bring you. Not that he stretches to leave his position. So the idea is not to invent your way. You don't seek God at his terms. It's pride. And let me tell you something. Please listen to me. Many preachers are getting it wrong. The way they are building people will frustrate them somewhere along the line is true now i i must confess to you it is difficult to build people holistically it is very difficult because our individual callings you see the way god works with men is that because of his call upon your life he tilts you towards a dimension of himself and you will have to focus in that area to gain mastery the side effect of that focus is that you will trivialize other areas are we together now if god has called me into the ministry of healing for instance chances are that because of my focus my staying in that area all the books i read all the conferences i go to will be along the healing ministry chances are that i will pay little attention to leadership and administration because it has not been captured in my experience with god that is the reason why the unity of the body is important because seeking God in that way has a side effect but he created the unity of the body to give that balance now my refusal to align with the body will make me mentor people along a line and very soon you will see a pattern of deficiency in a particular dimension it was produced by we preachers so i can you can see people who are prosperous powerful but they have no regard for spiritual things no regard no intelligence no nothing excellence yes sir administration yes sir leadership yes sir prosperity as much as we know financially speaking yes sir but their spirits are it's unfortunate the knowledge of God, zero. Passion for God, zero. Evangelism, zero. Conformity to the life and the character of Christ, zero. Every time you see a prevalent pattern within a people, the communicators, the shapers, the molders of their understanding are to be blamed. And so I admit to you as a man of God that it is difficult to build people holistically. It's very difficult very difficult because sometimes you will have to go out of your natural inclination with god to supply that balance but it is worth it if you love people are you getting what i'm saying mm. our passions are not only dependent on the holy spirit they are also dependent on our age ranges please listen carefully 
this is not what I'm teaching tonight. I just want to express something. A young man seeking God from between the ages of 10 to maybe 25 or 30 because of the, the reality that most likely a major part of that young man's life in terms of needs and all of that is being there is usually someone who is helping him out with his decisions, with resources. Are we together? So it is justifiable that that young man does not seem to see any need in developing his mind and trying to make sure that resources are available for instance a man of 35 to 50 has his passions altered because children have come into the equation their development has come into the equation there are responsibilities at this point the implication of your life and your decisions no longer affect you alone they affect society is that true they affect the faith of another person they affect the destinies of the young ones that you are raising biologically or otherwise and then a man who is from 50 upwards his passions his interest is also different so you have to be careful you have to look at these factors in opening your spirit to be mentored are you listening to what I'm saying if I listen to a man of 65 years or 70 years he has a lot to tell me in terms of experience and knowledge but the truth is that it will be unfair for my desire and interest and passions to be forced to resonate with him I will find out that that conformity will affect my growth process are you getting what I'm saying so when God calls a man God does not only give you a message God gives you an age range where your message and ministry becomes effective most preachers don't know this if I preach to elderly people now of say maybe 60 years to 80 years let me tell you the truth they are not going to be touched by my message they will only be impressed that the things they learned old I learned young at the end of that message, they won't stand up and say, "My, I couldn't sleep. No, there is nothing I would tell them that is worth lacking sleep. The mistake has been made. The lessons have been learned. Their focus is on pouring their lives to a younger generation. Please, listen to me. Don't hate anybody, but be careful who mentors you. Because you will be a reproduction of not only the mindset but the interests the perspectives is important the bible says david served his generation served his generation a man can be talking to you who has estates a man can be talking to you who has 30 branches as a pastor a man can be talking to you who has raised sons and daughters around the world and the truth is he does not really have any need a man can be talking to you from the perspective of his sabbath he has entered his sabbath experientially there are some things that he will not have the time to teach you are we together they will be focusing on maintaining certain levels not helping you get there because he has arrived there and chances are that when you learn from him you will only maintain your current level he's teaching you maintenance not growth are we together the way i teach and guide people 10 15 years ago i'm still a young man but it's not the same context are we together People are married now. They have families. Their needs are shifting. Their needs are changing. So a young man can have a fellowship where 99% of the people are unmarried. 99% are students, just got admission. The context of his teaching, his example, his emphasis. I don't expect that kind of person to be teaching on love and relationship and all of that. No. The, the messages in that kind of cycle should be very finite. God, the Holy Spirit pressing into God are we together there's no issue of counseling over love and relationship I, I, it's on seriousness at that level because the the epicenter of their pursuit should be God 
to know him but a good leader not just a man of god must be able to bring relevant teachings that align with the transitory processes of people's lives otherwise a time will come where your message may be powerful but no longer relevant you see people only stay under you when they can see the applicability of your messages not the power that is dispensed from them you will be surprised that your message can become so powerful but the context of your communication no longer fits those people so you must learn are you getting blessed i don't want you to fail in life spiritually and otherwise so my assignment is not just to bring the word of god the power of the holy ghost my assignment is to be sensitive and to bring the teachings as we all transition together are we together so that children will not come and you find out that in everything you've learned about god there was no provision to grow spiritually while taking care of your family then you have to live your spiritual life to take care of your family because the preacher did not tell you in his teaching you you know god based on his teaching only if you don't have children but now when you have children there is no system of incorporating other things and the pursuit of god when he was teaching you how to know god you were probably a student who had all the time but right now you are not only a worker you are a supervisor and he's still giving you the template of someone who has eight hours free to love god are you seeing that now and that may no longer work and you will feel guilty that because you could not do the things you were doing before the way you are doing them based on his interpretation he will make you feel you are backsliding not knowing that every face has a strategy for remaining spiritual are you getting what i'm saying now if you don't learn this a day will come certain quality of people will never come to your church because your message does not capture god as presented to people within that frame of influence remember he told elijah eat for the journey is far by the time you become a managing director who may be in a country just for two months in a whole year the man of God must be able to bring a strategy for spiritual growth that will give you the same result as an idle student who has eight hours in his disposal. Otherwise, you will find out that you apply your, your eight hours with God every day formula and you find out that you are knowing God but your company is crashing. And then you say, Kai, what is all this? Then he will tell you, leave the company and focus on God. Then you focus on God and find out that something about your life is becoming ineffective. Many believers are afraid because the things they used to do, the transitions in their lives, no longer afford them all the time again. I never would have believed that my life would be this busy and this occupied. Time is gold for me. You see that? That means there must be a system of time redemption such that my spiritual life does not suffer and other things also will not suffer. Are you getting blessed? So we have people who know God but they are not blessed. We have people who get to a point and certain kinds of people cannot come to hear the word of God upon their lips. The reason is because they do not have an applicable message or a pattern that ministers Christ to them. Being a man of God is not just having power and the ability to speak. Hallelujah. I used to preach a lot faster than I do now. But... I came to a point where I had to ask myself what exactly is the purpose of preaching? What is the purpose of communication? And I found out that the purpose is understanding. It is terrible to have people sit under you for many years 
and really never understand you. You may be impressed by their shouting. Woo! And you will be so flattered. Let me tell you the truth with all humility. You see, there are levels when God brings you to every point that you are under pressure to prove has been proven. So settle down and build people. You see that? Yes. I will be a foolish person at this level of my life to be proving that the anointing of the Spirit is upon me. To be proving whether I have access to revelations or not. It's not pride. These realities have been proven. The thing to prove now is the hand of God by the lives you raise. Now, you can go on to a secondary school or a campus and see a young guy under pressure for someone to shout under the anointing because at that level, he's seeking for validation. So his pressure will be that the, if at the end of that meeting, only two people fall, he can go back and lock the door for three days. Say, Lord, what happened? That's the reason why you see people like Papa Ia Deboe. They just come and say, the Lord bless you. And I mean, they are so not concerned whether you shout or not. They, they know what they are giving you. It's up to you to believe whether you have it or not. Someone can be falling in their presence and truly speaking, you see that they are not interested. The point has been proven. You can't keep proving a point forever. You must win yourself out of that childishness and focus on building people. My pride now, let me tell you this. At the level God has brought me by his grace, my pride is no longer my results. My pride is your results. If I celebrate my results now, tea and bread, say everybody come and look, God gave me tea. It's a sign that I've failed. God has been fair enough to me. Now my own result is your result. Are you seeing that now? So my focus has shifted. It's not just on myself. God has helped me. God has tried for me. I will be wicked to still think about myself. I don't go to preach and wondering, will they give me honorarium? And if yes, how much will it be? No, no. My heart, God sees, is that Lord you have helped me you have granted me understanding now lord let your word prevail over your people you see that so that from nowhere a young man rises with a strange level of grace a family is able to capture dimensions of god that they can reveal you are finding purpose you are finding your place in life you are causing and stirring revivals across territories this for me is my joy a time must come fatherhood is not all about growing old it's all about pouring yourself into people and witnessing with all humility the consistency of the truths of god the truths of the kingdom that make men great are finite you can know them it is the pursuit of god that is infinite are you getting what i'm saying the, the keys that you need to piece together like you can get to a final year and your lecturer say you are finished you say i finished what you say you finished the course it doesn't mean you have finished learning but you have safely exhausted all that it takes to be awarded a certificate that can happen in the spirit that you can learn the things you need to know about certain things and god says now your message is clear your priority what keeps you fresh now is not just new revelations but the freshness of his presence that's why in old age you will still be fat and flourishing because you are planted are we together when you listen to papa deboe or you listen to benny hill and they talk the truth is that most of what they say will not necessarily be new to you but why do you receive it it comes with a freshness that 45 years of ministry has not eroded are you getting what i'm saying now yes god sees my heart i detest a ministry where only the man of god or the man of god and a few people they are the ones who are prayer warriors. They are the ones who are loving God. They are the ones who are conforming into his character. And then there is a, 
there are the masses of followers as we call them broke weak don't know god and for many years they remain loyal to that anointing it's not god's way of doing things three years was enough for jesus to build certain people and after that like the foxes of samson he released them he said guys i know you want me to stay but it is expedient that i go because it's time for you to be on the stage too and did they succeed they turned the world upside down I look at a few people who God is helping. God is helping all of us. But I look at us and our spiritual results. I look at our financial results. I look at our results of influence and all. And I'm telling you, my heart is gladdened. I know. I remain committed to helping you become something that you may not understand now or appreciate but at the end of your life i still say it again you will stand back and watch yourself and say god so this is where you are going to take me to hallelujah pray in one minute say lord where i have not been attentive to you take away my pride take away that pride give me the grace son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from out of your mouth keep them in the midst of your heart it says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh within me rise let that Deborah let that Milka let that Hannah Rachel within me rise this is why I am here let that man of kingdom influence within me rise it is for your glory it is for your kingdom an heir as long as he's a child differeth not from a slave but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed Lord I will listen hallelujah Tonight I'm going to teach us briefly, just very briefly, just to prepare the ground for the seven days. By the way, please, I don't want you to miss any of these days. I'm, my heart is already excited because of what God is going to be doing. Your life will so change it will surprise you. We're going to be sharing mysteries and we're going to be praying one mystery per day that you handle and it just sets you on fire and we'll pray we're going to have a time of intense prayer praying in the spirit repositioning yourself times of encounters times of restoration of mantles of graces times of opening of new spiritual dimensions yes the prophetic is there but needs to be enlarged the apostolic is there but needs to be enlarged it's true that the healing ministry is there but it needs to be enlarged capacity please don't miss it this is not some activity of men no seven o'clock you are here no matter how long it takes to start just be here anywhere if you there is no space somewhere this is not a koinonia program this is a visitation that god is bringing to the land it will be a time of strange miracles few hours but the impact will linger upon your spirit 
make sure you fast please fast let the little children fast give them a little time they may not be able to fast six to six but except you are pregnant or under medical supervision then that that's all right but even at that doesn't mean you just eat anything anyhow are we together let your spirit be alive please off off useless movies films just suspend it for a while i beg you they don't have to be wrong all these social media distractions minimize it focus on god focus on god let what will play from your phone and your screens be worshiped give god one week and let him expand you you can't put new wine in an old wine skin so let god replace the wine skin so that it can take something heavier for the seasons that are coming hallelujah the protocol department will make arrangements will try to see how the buses will be available at least to bring in people and will try to finish on time but it's going to be seven days of fire in this place seven days of the strange move of the spirit epochal revelations of the truth of god's word that if and when you handle them will turn your life around hallelujah don't come alone invite someone years ago when i went for an Arbonke crusade there was no seat i stood there for six hours six solid hours because i was hungry when you are hungry you don't even see the color of the cloth of your neighbor your eyes are fixed he said if your eye be single your heart will be full of life don't just come to hear come to see you can argue with what you hear but you cannot argue with what you see i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower so that i will see what the lord will say the lord is saying but my eyes it is what you see that you get not just what you hear. the lord put a strong burden in my heart this night just a few minutes let's talk about it the spirit of wisdom your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise your spirit i will sing of the wonders of your word i will see out for joy i will see of the wonders of your word and i will forever sing your praise james chapter one verse five Forever sing your praise. And I will forever sing your praise. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom. So the Bible tells us it is possible that a man can lack wisdom. It does not stop him from being a human being. It is possible to live without the wisdom of God at work in you. And it says, if any of you lack wisdom, the question here before we read on is how do you know you lack wisdom? Because you only ask when you don't have it. But how do I know that I do not have wisdom? Because remember the Bible says every man is right in his own eyes. So based on what parameter what parameter do i use to arrive at the conclusion that i am bankrupt of wisdom there is nobody i know on earth with the exception of few people who will admit that they are not wise is that true you try telling somebody who considers himself a gentleman and say i don't think you are exactly wise and you think the person will laugh at you and say wow i'm just learning that no you're going to have a big problem the person is not wise me am i a madman do i look like one but the bible says 
if any of you realizes that he lacks wisdom so the first assignment is not to ask the first assignment is to find out how do you know that the wisdom of God that the spirit of wisdom is working in your life are we together now there must be a system in the kingdom that God has provided to help men understand so I can come to the conclusion because you see as human beings it is very difficult for us to admit that certain things are not working in our lives especially for believers we are people of faith and sometimes we can exaggerate it and admitting the deficiency of certain qualities in our lives is not natural for men to admit are we together now yes when you tell someone he can't cook say no 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 i can't cook what are you? i mean this is it you are evidently seeing that this meal is not servable and the person is saying i can cook because in his eyes this is a wonderful meal are we together you are seeing a gentleman who is not looking smart and you're saying no 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 you are not dressing smart say, no 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 i mean as far as i'm concerned i'm very very okay so it is difficult i'm explaining to you this this if any man lack wisdom is a very deep process to arrive at a point let me tell you realizing whatever makes you come to a point where you know you do not have wisdom has to be the spirit of god the arrogance of men does not allow for that level of admission we can secretly desire to be wiser we can secretly admire individuals who the spirit of wisdom is evidently working in but to outspokenly admit no it's very uncomfortable are we together but the bible says if any of you lack wisdom let him ask who let him ask of god that giveth unto how many men so the manifestation of the wisdom of god in the life of a believer is not privy to certain intelligent people it's not privy to apostles and prophets no the giving of this operation of the spirit is given to all men he says he does so liberally and then an upbraided not and it shall be given that means if i look at your life and i do not see wisdom i am safe to conclude at certain things number one that you have not received and you receive not because you have not asked and you ask not because you have not seen the deficiency in your life are you seeing that now that means if you look at my life and your life and i am bankrupt of the wisdom of god not the wisdom of men that comes to naught the wisdom of God if it is not in my life the Bible says if I ask it should be given so if it is not in my life and God is benevolent it means that I have not genuinely asked and I have not asked because I have not seen the need and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped that means something about my understanding i have indoctrinated myself into believing that i have sufficient wisdom let me tell you the formula that the bible designed for men to know whether there is wisdom in their lives or not wisdom is very vocal the bible says wisdom is justified by her children wisdom is justified by her children there are fruits in your life and my life that validate the presence of wisdom there has to be fruits in your life and my life there are things i cannot as a human being be sure of whether you have them or not i leave that to god wisdom is not part of those because if the wisdom of god is functioning in the life of an individual it is justified by the results children there talks of the results the proceedings that come from a life that is under the influence of wisdom so how do you know tonight whether or not the wisdom of god and more so the spirit of wisdom is at work very simple look at your results 
Look at your life. Unbiasedly. Look at your life unashamedly. And then you can come to the conclusion that mm -mm, the repetition of pain the repetition of failure listen carefully the repetition of struggle the repetition of hardship the repetition of the absence of the power the grace the favor of god in your life is a testament that the spirit of wisdom may not be at work in you the spirit of god is at work in you but that dimension of wisdom May not be at work in you. Are you blessed? Lack of the wisdom of God is what is responsible for the anxiety of men. You know what it means to be anxious? Worrisome. The fear that plagues people, you will always fear until you know what to do. And he himself knew what he ought to do. The Bible took out time to talk about anxiety. Philippians chapter 4. And when you read from verse 6 to 7. It says be anxious for nothing. Please give it to us. Let's, let's look at it before we, we talk some more about wisdom. It says be. The word careful there does not just mean be careless. It means be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer. We see prayer again. You leave that. We're going to touch that later. But it says be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. There is an information that can take away anxiety. Anxiety, let me tell you something. It's not proof that Satan is around you. It's proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work in your life. It's an uncomfortable truth we must admit. Our world is full of people dying of anxiety. Where will this come from? Where will, I mean, what, no, no. The pain and fear. Jesus took half of a whole chapter to talk about worry. Spoke about the birds of the air that break a spiritual law that is responsible for abundance. He says, yet your father, yet not Solomon, arrayed in all of his splendor and apparel, is like one of these. Anxiety is proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work. Anxiety stems from uncertainty. There is a level of uncertainty that is around our lives, financially speaking, spiritually speaking. So you are about to um, do certain things, embark on your life's journey, and then because of the gaps of uncertainty, you find out that there is worry and anxiety unbelief comes in fear comes in because of fear you become self-centered because you are aware that something about you will fail so you become possessive self-centered angry and all these other elements come in i found a very interesting scripture we're going to read it and then i'll define for you what wisdom is psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 are we there read it please one to read ah uh ah -uh. one to read thou through thy, thy commandments have made me wiser than my enemies for they are ever before me next verse i have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies are my meditation the last verse i understand more than the ancient stop stop don't rush it i understand more than my enemies you made me wiser than my enemies you made me wiser than my teachers and you made me wiser than the ancient and there is a key we're coming there are we together it says thou by thy commandments by thy laws ah, you have made me wiser 
wiser than my enemies so I can rise wiser than my teachers wiser than the ancient because I have kept your secret Psalms 104 verse 24 Psalm 104 verse 24 Oh Lord how manifold are thy works everybody say results i want you to read it just the first line but change works with results ready one to read oh lord how manifold are thy results how did the results come about in wisdom thou hast made them all lord i look at your life and it's full of mighty works results and the psalmist was careful to let us know that they did not just happen because you are God it is by engaging wisdom wisdom that these possibilities have been made manifest and the earth is full of your riches which is one of the results that you have produced in wisdom there is a relationship between results and wisdom there is a relationship between riches and wisdom how manifold how multifaceted, how awe-inspiring are your works? What is wisdom? I put a definition here. Wisdom is possessing scriptural solutions. Scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately. Wisdom is possessing scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately. Possessing scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately. What is wisdom? Knowing what to do and doing it wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it if there is no doing it is not wisdom wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it possessing the scriptural solution there are many solutions there are many ways that seem it right unto a man but the end thereof will justify what way he took. So scriptural solutions to life's challenges. And then having the possession of those solutions, you engage them appropriately. You are wise if you do that. Are we together? So you have wisdom to the degree to which we see you preferring scriptural solutions to the challenges that are around your life and others. And the results that they produce many people listen to me do not possess this quality and there is an operation of the spirit that can make men to have this quality lavishly that regardless of your age listen carefully regardless of your educational background regardless of what your level of orientation that you can be um, you can have a, an influence of this dimension of the Holy Spirit at work in your life and all of a sudden your life opens up wonder after wonder a comprehension of the scriptural solutions listen to me if I ask everyone now write your prayer request and bring it here right now there are people who are going to ask for pages, not pieces of papers. Every one thing that you are writing is in need of an answer. Is that true? The Bible says the spirit of wisdom is able to route you in a way and manner that you possess the keys that it takes to turn that request into your testimony and then the fortitude to engage the laws you now know until the results become evident in your life is called wisdom proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 
tonight. Proverbs chapter 4. Please don't trivialize what I'm teaching you tonight. Wisdom is the principal thing. It's using a business terminology now. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Verse 8. Exalt her. Personifies wisdom now. Exalt her like you would do a lady you love. Exalt her. Is that true? Like you see a man treat his wife that he so loves. He says, exalt her and there is a reward for exalting her. Prize her above all else and she shall do what? What is responsible for promotion? It is true that God is the lifter of men. But the dimension of him that lifts men is his wisdom. Meaning if you are in a position for a long time. It's not just an attack from hell. But it's a sign that the spirit of wisdom is not at work. The spirit of wisdom creates motion in your life. It not only creates motion, it creates an upgrade to your life. It is because of the presence of this possibility that the Bible says the path of the just is like the shining light that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day exalt her and she shall promote thee now listen ah. it says she shall bring thee to honor it did say she shall bring thee honor honor is here it's not just a it's not just an attribute it's a realm of existence that wisdom can like an usher say follow me i will lead you somewhere regardless of your background as a preacher as a businessman, as a mother, a father, wisdom can usher you. And whilst you follow her foolishly, you will get into a realm. The name of that realm is honor. Not an event. It is how you live. Honor. That wisdom can bring a man to honor when thou dost embrace her. Are we together? Like Ruth held on to Naomi, I'm not leaving you. I have seen the value of your presence in my life. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. This is what people are looking for. They are looking for promotion in the spirit. They are looking for promotion in finances promotion in influence men of god are struggling trusting god increase in membership increase in whatever this is the formula god gives us and we ignore him and then we keep searching around verse 9 this is what the bible says she shall give to thy head hallelujah an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver who is the she here wisdom wisdom that for embracing wisdom it can veto your background it can veto any other thing in your life brothers and sisters and bring you to this possibility this is the realm that we all desire to get there and the bible tells you that the way to get there is wisdom are we together yes the bible says through wisdom a house is built a house is built not through desire through desire the intention to build is there but the actual building is true wisdom this ministry brothers and sisters you see was built and is being maintained by wisdom every great man and woman you acknowledge around the world every great enterprise that you see and admire everyone who has come to a position of influence in the kingdom has done so by the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom years ago i was listening to pat robertson the founder of cbn 700 club and he said as a young man when he was about to start ministry he said he went to the lord he said lord i'm a young man about to start give me three things number one he said give me wisdom 
Number two, he said, give me favor. Number three, he said, give me the anointing of the spirit. Ah, I went back to God too. And I said, Lord, thank God I'm still young. Number one, give me wisdom. Boy, I stayed there before moving to favor. Because I knew that that wisdom, it, I, my life was so bankrupt of it. How else would I have gotten it? Our society is full of unwise people. It's not an insult, it's a description. They are sincere people. But their decisions and their results are very clear. That the wisdom of God, of God, not Sophia, not human wisdom. We are talking of a dimension of wisdom here that has nothing to do with age and not necessarily education and all of that. The wisdom of God. The faculty to produce result as God, at God's level. The spirit of wisdom. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. The reason why Joshua excelled was not just that he was anointed. Joshua always had the anointing. The anointing was there. But the Bible says, And Joshua the son of Nun was full of what? The spirit of wisdom. He was already full of the spirit. And yet Moses was told to lay hands on him. How do you lay hands on someone who is already filled with the spirit? And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. Not full of wisdom. Full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. Joshua full of the spirit of wisdom. Joshua full of the spirit of wisdom. No wonder when Moses died. There was nothing much for God to tell him again. He said Moses my servant is dead. Joshua, my only encouragement is for you to be strong. You already have the spirit of wisdom. Mm. You have it. Just be strong. You are a young man. And I know that leading these people is difficult. But there is a spirit in you. You will lead them in a way that will make you a wonder. Leadership is by the spirit of wisdom. Mm. Let me tell you this. Listen. Any man on earth. Listen to me carefully. Any man on earth and in the kingdom that multitudes are listening to him, respect him. Human beings are not stupid. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can have a crowd of foolish people, but there is a level to which there is there is a level to which human beings will not be more foolish than that. Jesus went up the mountain and a crowd followed him. There was something he was telling them. There was something contained in his teachings. I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise. Not knowledgeable. Hidden is a principle that can bring solutions to your pain. Ah. There are families that if they knew this, weeping will stop. It's true. There are individuals that if they know this, weeping will stop. He said, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And the elder tapped me and said, weep not. The book can be opened. When the book is open, then tears. I look at times in my life when I was so bankrupt of certain dimensions of wisdom. And I looked at the tears that came from my eyes, but no more. His wisdom has come. Hmm. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing. And for preachers, we need this so much. You know, most times, we don't start ministry with wisdom. We start ministry with passion. Passion. And then, your passion leads you to spiritual activities that bring certain dimensions of the anointing. And then, while the ministry starts going, 
at a point you hook in one place still anointed but wisdom you can't move further because the promoter is wisdom the exalter is wisdom the one who brings you to the realm of honor is wisdom herein lies the answer to the dilemma we see that gifted people still don't rise because to be gifted and to be wise are two different things you can be full of so much anointing and yet live an unrewarded life and yet not be able to rise in the spirit but god is changing someone's story in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i have watched people do you know um sometimes i sit down and i look at people truly speaking when i look at people i fight tears because i know what they are doing wrong i don't fight tears because of their situation i know i fight tears because i can explain why their lives are that way i have seen well-meaning lovely men and women of god that i love and honor with all my heart but i look at their lives the same way my life was and i know where they are missing it please no result is a mistake please learn this you may not understand what is being engaged but there is something being engaged to produce that outcome you may not understand what is being engaged but there is something being engaged a man does not just become powerful no no a man does not just last in ministry a man does not just become anointed brothers and sisters please listen to me the fact that you don't know what is being done does not mean something is not being done your miracle is when the solution comes and when the grace to apply it is released then you know that challenge has come to an end Isaiah 11 tells us there is a real spirit of wisdom, verse 2. That the Holy Spirit can manifest in a man as wisdom. Notice that even for the building of the tabernacle and in the Lord's house, God did not allow people to be involved carelessly. The spirit of wisdom had to come upon them to produce God's desired results. If the spirit of wisdom comes upon your ministry, your ministry will change in a way not just from human terms you will find out that the possibilities that only God can produce is what happens in your life years ago I'm not a social media person but the Lord spoke to me revealing the strategy for the next level of ministry and this is what the Lord told me I said Lord how will your word get to people and all of that yes we're going to have a tv ministry but that's for another time but how is it going to happen and this is what the lord told me at that time they sell messages you don't upload messages online and the lord said this is the strategy don't sell any message let the messages be packaged and put it online i will give it wings to the ends of the earth the wisdom of god it never made sense then what is this who has the time to download heavy MBs of an audio not video people are not, I mean when somebody can buy a CD and slot it who do you think you are but when his wisdom comes in something that looks so foolish go around Jericho seven times just go around it has never been done oh God just go around and at the seventh time that act of wisdom crashes down Jericho brothers and sisters that one act till today this ministry will never recover from it that one act in obedience to the spirit of wisdom that's it hmm. I live to praise your name I have no fear of what tomorrow brings the spirit of wisdom is what is responsible for being able to afford the bills of ministry please hear me 
there is no ministry except you want to manipulate people don't be angry at men of god that you see manipulating people for let me tell you you are doing ministry and you want to work in financial integrity and still work in financial abundance you've got to receive an impartation of the spirit of wisdom otherwise it will wear your grace out you will cry one day to death You need it in your life. There are many Christian homes that is very clear the spirit of wisdom is not there. The decisions are always leading to pain. The decisions are always leading to retrogression. Remember I told you that wisdom is justified by her children. So if I claim the spirit of wisdom is in my life and everything I do is moving me back, I should check something is wrong. Something is wrong. There are men of God who are going back and back and back. There are individuals going back. They are better yesterday than they are today. No matter what kind of prayer you pray for them. I've seen individuals that I didn't see for a long time. And you look at them and their lives are a tragedy. They are still serving the Lord. That's the painful part. They never, they, they didn't backslide. Still passionate. And you say, why is your life like this? Are these your children? Yes, sir. Why are they like this? of god god is faithful no sir don't 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 that does not look like faithfulness is god challenging us some of our parents are pastors they've been pastors for many years i'm not talking about finances no growth there is no day that the ministry breaks through that you can say sinners have been saved lives have been transformed pain after pain let me tell you repetition of pain is a sign that you need the spirit of wisdom. It is the principal thing the Bible says. It is the principal thing. There are ministries that rise and fall. They rise to a level they are doing so well. And then at a point you find out that things start to nosedive. No scandal, no nothing. Just they have exhausted the level of wisdom that can take them beyond that level. And they come down the scriptural solution to life's problem and the fortitude to engage it appropriately is called wisdom standing let me use someone come come show standing between this gentleman and his destiny whether it is spiritually speaking whether it is financially speaking the obstacle other forces are there like favor and the rest. But it is wisdom that tells you what to do for other forces. You know why the Bible says it is the principal thing? Because all other forces depend on it. It is when you engage the truths that are received from heaven that other forces now start coming into play. The anointing, this and that. It is wisdom that shows you what to do for the anointing to be multiplied in your life. It is wisdom that tells you what to do for favor to be activated. It is wisdom that tells you what to do for restoration to come. All other manifestations are dependent on wisdom. So, in the interim, there are many other forces. But the principal force, wisdom. Are we together? So I do not, I know that I should get there. I know that if favor comes, I will arrive there. I know that there is a way I can be healed. I know that there is a way the prophetic gift can be multiplied. But what is that way? What is that way? And how do I engage it? It is the spirit of wisdom that has brought forth these seven days of divine visitation. Because there is something that you can engage that will bring other things and then the spirit of wisdom comes i can show you a man that is carrying the spirit of wisdom his results her results it is true wisdom is justified by her children if you accept this thing tonight then we can finish up that verse if any of you lack results if any of you lack results if you lack results you lack wisdom if any of you lack results if your spiritual life lacks potency 
if your finances lack potency if your influence and your leadership and whatever it is that you're involved in lacks potency no promotion no growth nobody desires your grace you are living an unrewarded life spiritually and otherwise it says that if you lack this it's a sign that the wisdom of god is not at work in you hallelujah let me share with you very briefly how the spirit of wisdom works this is the core of what i'm teaching tonight most people are aware we've taught several teachings on the holy spirit and we've taught on wisdom you can make reference to my teaching what wisdom is this but the operation how it works is where i think that most people have not been able to access it mm. how is the spirit of wisdom how does it operate how do i activate the spirit of wisdom so that it produces for me ready let's finish up the scripture james chapter 1 and verse 5 james chapter 1 verse 5 there is wisdom in the name of jesus there is wisdom in the name of jesus if if any one of you lack results which is a product of lack of wisdom what's the first thing let him ask you have not because you ask not not because god is unable to give it let him ask let him ask let him pray let him raise up a petition from a desperate heart that when i begin to pray my prayer not only brings the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom but also activates its operation if prayer can bring wisdom then prayer can make it work too are we together now yes let him pray i can know a man functioning under the influence of the spirit of god by the results that come from his prayer not just his prayer i need to see the results that come from your prayer the reason why many ministries have poor prayer meetings is because over time people have concluded that prayer does not work they cannot see the results from it do you know that praying in the spirit capture something the bible calls the hidden wisdom of god that the princes of this world did not know it says for if they had known this they would not crucify the lord of glory there was something paul was doing while he was praying and praying in the spirit that began to grant him access prayer activates the operation of the spirit of wisdom not just bringing the anointing in your life the functionality the operation of the spirit of wisdom is released as you pray while they prayed they didn't know what to do how do we advance the gospel across this territory they prayed and they fasted and the spirit of wisdom came separate me paul and barnabas this is a strategy they stood before jericho listen when you know that the spirit of wisdom is with you you will never fear when you see challenges all you need to know is to wait till the answer come many of us never wait we go ahead and say let the answer follow me and we call it faith and it damages us into pieces may never live to have a second chance when joshua got before jericho the bible says the fence of jericho could host five chariots fortified tooth and nail to a point that a prostitute could comfortably live in the fence the fence of jericho was like cgc how do you penetrate the place do you shoot is it an arrow is it a gun do you jump the spirit of wisdom he said don't worry they circumcised themselves and set their heart apart and 
an angel just came and revealed a strategy do this do that and the lord spoke the spirit of wisdom go around the city seven times and on the seventh day go around seven times the spirit of wisdom many of the things that we call prophecy is prophecy yes but what was uttered is the wisdom of god go and bath seven times go and bath seven times it is the solution not to all problems to your problem meaning someone else will do it not directed by god and not get any solution you see that the spirit of wisdom is god's customized solution for your challenges it's not generic is personal that's why i said it is not it is not the wisdom of the world the wisdom of the world is is universal in application like you say if someone is hungry eat god can tell you if you are hungry dance now that does not make sense but that is his solution for you go and bath seven times and the guy felt insulted Abba. I'm a captain of the Syrian army and he went to bath the seventh time the Bible says his skin became fresh you see let me tell you this is the mystery behind people doing what does not make sense and still getting results they are not making sense is that they are doing it as directed the spirit of wisdom came whatever he tells you to do do it this is the fountain of wisdom Mary knew she did they would have said ah Jesus look 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 the the person who sells this wine is here he can tell you Jews were not foolish people they knew how to crush wine for kings whatever he tells you do notice that no single miracle of Jesus was repeated twice the results were repeated many times but the manifestation of wisdom brought a unique solution for every issue at a certain time he spat on the ground and put in someone's eyes at a certain time he did something else look at him but we keep repeating the same thing and we just faith comes by hearing hearing what the wisdom of god when his wisdom comes to you then you get up and do what he told you to do then your life becomes a wonder lord where are we going to get the venue for this meeting i saw in my visions overflow lord i can't active your venue. i can use my brain to look at several venues which venue in zaria will contain the crowds you are showing me just keep praying cgc the spirit of wisdom see that as at the time the lord spoke the building had not even been expanded this when the spirit of wisdom speaks don't doubt you can walk on water and every other person who is walking sings except you because the spirit of wisdom is the dimension of the holy spirit that will ensure that what you see this is what makes the life of certain people look miraculous you are doing the same thing but they come and do it and get strange results because they don't do it as desired they wait faith waits until wisdom speaks you don't just act carelessly just because you know. No. Wisdom is manifested in prayer. When we pray, the spirit of wisdom begins to speak. Learn this. Most of us, we are so distracted in our prayer that we do not hear the communications of the spirit of wisdom. Lord, what is the way out to this predicament and challenge in my life? And the Lord says, pray. And we pray after five minutes say god you are not speaking please good night and we just we cheat ourselves there you don't pray as long as you want you pray till the answer comes it's not the issue of 10 minutes or one hour it is when it comes there is an object to your prayer and you begin to pray when 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 cgc became full and the overflows became full it was obvious that when there was a program here there was no other venue that could take us lord what is going to be the way out of this when you know this you know that there's nothing called impossible impossible is the name given to the state before the arrival of the wisdom of god when the wisdom of god comes it will turn a mountain i tell you into a level plain ground is god speaking to you hmm. 
and all of a sudden I was praying one time and the Lord said because of this every time Friday night is not available Sunday night will be available as simple as it is that ended the issue of trying to look for all of these things Lord the overflows are full now to the roadside what do we do next by his wisdom God was able to profess solution and were able to host people overflow three is bigger than overflow one two and three and I mean overflow one and two together the wisdom of God you see you never see how it would have happened until wisdom creates the way then you look and say ah, why didn't I think about it because your small brain cannot think about it my brother you need the wisdom of God Joseph after he finished interpreting the dream then the spirit of wisdom came hear the spirit of wisdom speaking let Pharaoh find a man who is discreet and wise and appoint him over this and that when there was problem and the people were arguing and it was almost killing Moses Moses could not do his work because there were so many people and God told him Mr. Man you are going to kill yourself let the spirit of wisdom guide you set men thousands and hundreds and fifties and then appoint elders to take care of them then you just play supervisory roles ah, and Moses found rest he would have died and said it's the will of God how many pastors die because they love God but there is no manifestation of the spirit of wisdom to guide the affairs by the grace of God, one of the principles that help in my being efficient in ministry is the fact that by his wisdom we have created a robust leadership structure that allows me to focus on the ministry of word and prayer. I don't have to come here in the afternoon to check to say, ah, I hope these people did their duty. Through wisdom, a house is built. Is God speaking to us? Everybody say prayer. Shout it, prayer. That means if the devil attacks your prayer life, what is he attacking? He's attacking the arrival of a scriptural solution that brings testimonies for you. When you set yourself apart to pray and the devil said it does not matter, among other things, he's robbing you of access to the wisdom of God. Say, I will pray. Shout it. Say, I will pray. Men who pray access the wisdom of God they come up from their prayer life with very strange solutions very very strange solutions sometimes solutions that don't make sense do not do not downplay on a leader that knows how to get wisdom through prayer when you say we have come to our wit's end then you see another dimension of grace and wisdom number two how is wisdom activated Wisdom is activated through meditation. Meditation. Noisy people, sorry for you. This is where the devil cheats us. We live in a noisy society. If you are not making noise, your phone is making noise. If your phone is not making noise, the television is making noise. If the television is not making noise, the well-wishers around your house are making noise. Our lives are full of noise that cheats us. There is a dimension of wisdom that only silence can bring. Meditation. Great leaders meditate. You sit down. Thank you. There's got to be a way out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you sit quietly. Do you know sometimes I do this from morning till night. Meditating like a fool. Sometimes I just kneel down in front of my chair and put my head down. I'm waiting waiting and the answer will never come till sometimes late in the night the spirit of wisdom comes majestically doesn't come in a rush and foolishly and carelessly if you don't have patience forget about it because you will not come sometimes you finish all of those things you are prayed in the night you just wake up to stretch a little and fire falls from heaven and you sit down this is it this is it It will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. It will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Is the wisdom of God working in your life? 
Oh, I fell down the other day when you said receive wisdom. Do you meditate? No, sir. Then the spirit of wisdom may be there, but you're not aligning sufficiently. That's why many men of God don't have messages to preach because they write a list of messages and preach one by one and they finish the 35th one and the year is not even up to half. The year is not halfway gone. And you wonder, what do I do? Inspiration comes in the place of meditation. Never forget. What does it mean to meditate? To ponder. Ponder. Not just on anything. To ponder on truth. Ponder on the word of God. Not just to mutter but to ponder. To think. It's called imagination. It's not like imagination. It is called imagination. The creation of images by the spirit. Genesis 11 before Nimrod began to build he called the people and they began to meditate meditation is not just sitting down under a tree that's a wonderful um, um, what they call it a wonderful way of stimulating meditation but meditation is where your mind is called to a point where it is stimulated to begin to create creativity is a product of meditation let me tell you how the spirit of wisdom works the spirit of wisdom is a creative spirit is the first dimension of the holy spirit we see in genesis chapter one creation the spirit of wisdom creates it creates solutions see what i'm teaching you is 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 a jackpot to your success in life if you understand it creation the solution to every problem you seek already exists in Christ. But there is a system of transporting it from the realm of the spirit. It is called creation. It is called the power of imagination. Where you give the Holy Spirit your mind like a woman's womb and you allow him to brood upon it. That's what happens in meditation. You offer like a wife gives her womb over to her husband to be implanted with a seed. That's what happens many of us are not creators creation is not just by speaking it is out of the abundance of the heart when that incubation has happened then your speaking is among the process that makes it manifest not many people will teach you this thing i'm teaching you the spirit of wisdom will make your life a wonder if you know how it works Watch Jesus. This woman was caught in adultery. The very act of it. This is a kind of question where both yes and no would chain you. And Jesus kept quiet and was writing the spirit of wisdom. Immediately the spirit of wisdom landed. Then he spoke. He who does not have sin should cast the first stone. And then the Bible says his speech affected the oldest first you see you see how powerful wisdom is because the youngest can drop it and the oldest will say are you, are you stupid pick that stone then he started with the oldest if the oldest has dropped the stone what do you do as the youngest the miracle is not in dropping the stone is who dropped it first the oldest dropped it down to the last person woman where are your accusers go neither do I condemn you this is the spirit of wisdom it is the spirit of wisdom that suggested the strategy for the salvation of men. Mm. That instead of everybody dying, let's make a caricature out of Satan. It's called the hidden wisdom. Let one man come and let the whole world enter in him. Then let him die. So that one man came and Satan kept looking for him. At a point, the Holy Ghost restrained his hand and satan began to prevail and satan manipulated men to kill jesus and he ran to hell he said demons did you watch what happened i can't believe it i killed jesus and to his shock he saw jesus in hell and he said no this is a joke you can't be in hell he say yes i'm here because when you kill sinners they go to hell and so i died sin and here i am in hell give me the keys Give me the keys. Give me the keys. Give me the keys. 
and when the keys were given to him he dislodged principalities and powers made a public show of them and then he not only resurrected he resurrected with many who had died they were in the streets of jerusalem everybody saw him and he said guys this is it you will um you will go to heaven but i have to be the firstborn among the resurrected so let me go to heaven quickly i'll come back and then you guys will go and he went to heaven poured his blood according to hebrews in the tabernacle became the high priest and then he returned the guys went and he went to the disciples all hail i'm back all power in heaven he disarmed satan not through power through wisdom are we together listen let me teach you something i walk in the anointing many results are not dependent on power force wisdom is really what brings dominion because the realm of the spirit is a legal realm you engage through knowledge not just by trying to force things it's the ministry of the angels to do that they are the enforcers of the word of god they confirm the word of the servant but wisdom is solution that's why sometimes you see me ministering to people and you see me doing stupid things i can hold somebody's hand and the holy spirit can say let that person shout jesus and the person just shout Jesus, and then the person is falling. And you are watching, me too, I'm watching. I'm as shocked as you. We are all watching the wisdom of the Spirit. You will now get the formula and run to one small meeting and hold somebody's hand and tell the person to shout Jesus, and the person shouts and looks at you, say, I've done it. Say, do it again. Because it was just copying. This is one of the big mistakes of we young ministers. We copy acts without the Spirit that brought them. Are we together? Yes. Meditation. This is where many of us have missed it. That you sit before the Lord. What's that song? Brooding over every darkness. You are called. Listen. Light to shine from dark. How can light come out of darkness? That's what the Bible says. He said, God who has commanded light to come out of darkness. That means the answer is right there with you. In your chaos, the light, the raw material, sit down in that situation and meditate and let creation begin to happen. When you plant corn, the ugliness of the soil, and it is still where the new shoot comes out of. It's a principle. He's brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine in darkness you are brooding over all my darkness you are causing light to shine from dark so in the midst of that financial hardship sit down there that's when creation happens you're not going to run away from the challenge and get a solution somewhere sit in it by the rivers of babylon in the midst of the captivity i sat down there and a vision was open to me we run away from challenges the miracle is right there sit down there's got to be a way lord my wife no i prayed on there's got to be a way and all of a sudden you allow him to impregnate your mind ha. brothers and sisters i can tell you this your life will be a wonder first to you if you practice this it will be as if you are holding a charm or a genie somewhere that you are winding many of us don't sit down jobless people don't sit down to allow creation happen they just loiter around sir can you give me a job and god is saying i want to speak to you no god i'm, I'm i mean I'm, I'm i want to marry they said I, I can't marry because i don't have a job me i want to and god says, sit down now if we can take half the time we spend loitering around to sit down not worrying just find the back of one tree in the night and sit down when other people are snoring their destinies you sit quietly there's got to be a way to my life lord everything is not working nine prayer requests since last year nine of them not answered you are not a liar jesus 
speak to me and you are just playing you know i told i get who did i give an assignment was it us or school of ministry students no sometimes i don't know the difference but do it still do it go and play worship you don't just sit down and beds are just making noise worship doesn't distract you it steals your spirit and then you sit down sometimes for hours the flesh will never allow you sit down this flesh you see once you sit down you just start thinking ah but that lady is really beautiful you see don't stop still sit down there ah, but my father do you know to be honest do you know that i didn't have a good upbringing don't worry this is the flesh trying to distract something a time will come your flesh will be frustrated it will give up it's one of the benefits of fasting the flesh is empowered by the health of your body it takes advantage of food so when when food is minimal it it alters the interruption of the flesh yes sir it does ultimately leading to boosting your faith but that's how it works and you sit down lord there has to be a way and the lord sits down and says but you know you have hundred thousand and then a scripture just opens up and now this is god the spirit of wisdom coming to you now and looks at it and says except a corn falls in the ground and the lord can speak to you and say that hundred thousand that is your last money i'm not saying do it go and sow it you are not doing donation just thinking about it and you carry yourself as if you are going to go and die and sow it somewhere the moment you do that the same spirit that spoke to you now goes to your uncle who doesn't like you and say remember i've been telling you you will bless somebody it's time now it's janet it's this person and then your uncle calls you wisdom justified by her children and you are surprised and god says keep trusting me like this for your life and then you sit down and you find out let me tell you how god forces the spirit of wisdom to walk in you sometimes he will close the door of any physical helper in your life pain is a very good way of activating wisdom some of us until you go through certain levels of pain wisdom will never work in your life it's not all pain that is demonic hear what i'm telling you you always receive hundred hundred thousand from your father so every time they are saying the wisdom of god you say yes but what you are mean is the money is coming and then your father says well um i had a dream and i didn't see myself giving you money for five months so what are you saying say exactly that um a voice spoke to me and that's the voice that has been speaking to me that i got rich that you are benefiting from the same voice said i should leave you alone you may insult and get angry but after two weeks you sit down and in your anger you frown you frown you frown and then you just open a scripture anyhow lord help me and then you just see takes you to the story of the widow in zarafat what did she do you have been reading it because your stomach is full now you read it with your stomach empty then child thy light break forth and you see something you never saw ah god commanded a woman but she was not aware she was commanded but the bible says god already commanded her could it, could it be that there was something she was not receiving? Because God told Elijah, I've commanded her. Whether she, the, the message arrived to her or not is another thing. But me, I've commanded her. But when Elijah arrived, it didn't look like she was aware. I expect her to say, oh, you are the one. You're welcome. Come in. I mean, the loaf is there. The man said, I'm about to die. She would have died not hearing the command or seeing the prophet. The same way God would say, I've answered this person. And you look at the person's life and the answer is not yet there. I meditate a lot. Creation happens in my life through meditation. I have explored the power of imagination. This is not some zodiac, Scientology, metaphysical thing. This is a principle. Listen to the advice that God gave Joshua. Chapter 1 and verse 8. Let's attempt to round up. He said, this book of the law please give it to us shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shall meditate 
I thought I was, do you know, I literally was seeing it. <laughs> Truly speaking, <laughs> you guys are delaying. Okay, this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. Listen, but thou shalt meditate therein. Meditate therein. Not meditate any other place. You don't meditate on what you want. You meditate on the word of God. Not just look at a newspaper and say, Hi, again. Boko Haram. And you are looking. And you are thinking about a solution for your church. It won't come that way. Are we together? Thou shalt meditate there in day and night. When you meditate, an information will come from it. Then you observe to do. And then your way becomes prosperous. You don't act first. You sit down and allow the creative force of God's wisdom come to your life. Lord, my wedding is five months. All we have is 100,000. The budget is 2.5. There's got to be a way out. Not, hi, hey, God, you sent me. Jesus, talk to me. My spirit is open. I silence every voice of fear. Silence them first. I silence every wicked voice that wants to make God look unfaithful in my life. Lord, you are faithful and you are sitting down and the spirit of wisdom begins to move. The spirit of wisdom can tell you to do anything. It can just say, call one person and you call the person and he says, I'm going to do a transfer. You would think it's 100,000. You will see 3 million. And God says, now it has come. Go and marry your wife. And other people will see you and say, you that I know, Abba, my brother. And you, you will quietly go back and give God glory. Ah, God, wisdom has covered for me. That's why you see some people whose testimony should be like your own. Based on the physical parameters you see, but their testimonies are a thousand times greater than yours. Wisdom bail them out. Someone needs to receive this wisdom tonight. Because the depending on men forever let god send them remember i told you all blessings come from god through men to you but when you begin to depend on men depending on men is addictive it's addictive those men can even be your father and your mother many of us who have all this right conscious mentality my father you are the one that gave birth to me you are 40 years you are still saying it and God may not cause what is happening in your family, but you will see it as a ready tool and push you out. And then you sit down. And then you worry and call it meditation. And God says, no. Worrying. I've stopped you from doing that. But you sit down. And you meditate. Let me admit to you that you will not meditate one night and get the solution. No. I wish it were so. Sometimes it can happen. But that's just God's mercy helping you to encourage you so that the day that it doesn't come with the speed you want you will know god has been faithful and you will stay there are people who stay for weeks weeks turn to months every multi-millionaire knows this thing i'm telling you that their result is not just based on what they do but based on the reality that has been altered in their minds and their perceptions it is true way before god blessed this ministry with these crowds i had captured it it's there. Do you believe what I've taught you tonight? My, my prayer for you is not just that you finish a service today and say, wow, nice. <clears throat> but that you go and sit down and say, Lord, I know I'm a prayer warrior, but there is no time in silence to sit quietly. Wake up in the night and think, Lord, what is the next key? What is the next step? There are bills before me. What is the next step? This is the dimension we must step into as a ministry. There has to be a way out. Don't say there is no way. Don't join Satan. Saying there is no way is calling God a liar. You open scripture. No. There is a way. Ah. Light me Lord. Light me Lord. Light me Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, 
Like a candle, light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle, light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light my light. have taught you is the secret for the hand of God upon your life financially you will sit down and do business after business and business after business and be shocked that the result will be the same because out of the abundance of the heart what have you incubated in your spirit and your mind it's not about doing things you tell people these things they never listen because most people think men of God know nothing about finances and people run around looking for all kinds of give me money let me do this and God says one thing is needful settle down first apostle what do you think I can do to prosper sit down no I, my, blood, my blood is hot calm down and one the breath of the spirit will just light that bulb and you stand up circumspectly and with little effort the Lord will create a wonder out of your life hear what I'm saying write the challenges let me give you an assignment go and write out all the challenges that you are trusting God for and sit with a clean sheet of paper and your Bible and worship and just keep looking at them let me teach you this in conclusion can I can I am I free to teach you look at me <laughs> Pray in tongues for one minute. Pray in tongues for one minute. Labaka sude bilahasi yana kataboshi. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something. Jesus was teaching and he said the eye is the light of the body listen carefully please please listen the eye is the light of the body do you know what Jesus was saying I hope you know Jesus was not teaching a parable go and google the parables of Jesus you don't see that story as a parable he was giving something he was teaching a powerful principle that the eye these two objects you see in front of your face that there is a mystery seeing is only one of the functions and it's simply because that's all science told you there is a system of transporting realities to and from the realm of the spirit that only your eyes that's why God healed every blind person he saw there was no blind person that passed Jesus that was not healed there were other cripples that he left them but he was violent on blindness there is a relationship between your eyes and your destiny listen Paul became blinded by the glory of God but God had to open his spiritual eyes to be seen first before the physical one opened do you know why your eye closes in the night when you sleep light me Lord light my life light my destiny brothers and sisters there are secrets in this book when you find it your results are not just an issue of wish these eyes you see let me tell you what happens anything the eye makes contact with consistently the mind the mind listen to me carefully what your eyes makes contact with it forces your mind to begin to think on that reality now watch this it is not the thinking about it it is an incubation that starts happening in the realm of the spirit now the Holy Ghost knows the solution are we together now you meditate not just by closing your eyes alone because sometimes you close the physical eyes but you are still seeing are we together now 
and so that's the reason why you pray well in the night because there are few distractions your eye is seeing but you just see black and white this color sometimes can create noise it is an enemy to meditation are we together go and close a room and sit quietly and play worship and see what happens to you where you are not seeing the speaker Nepa took light and you are using your phone to worship and you pray they don't bring light because it's doing something to you this eye is a transmitter the same way you have a radio wave watch this not just your ears this eye the creation of a radio wave is in the similitude of the way God designed men to walk that you lift an antenna and it starts receiving the before you the goal is to get that sound to your radio is that true but you lift up something that something is your eyes that when you begin to make contact with the word of God I don't mean reading it just looking open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things what did David know so you are making contact and all of a sudden let me tell you what will happen very soon your eyes will stop seeing you are looking but you are no longer seeing your mind is what takes over have you seen that happen that you are reading something and for hours you keep reading the same line you can't move forward that's because something more superior than your reading is distracting you in that case worrying the eyes then your ears these things are great I'm showing you notice that you have a selection of songs in your phone or whatever you never sit down particularly to hear them but after hearing them five or six times you know the next song and you can sing along if they ask you to sing it on your own now you can't sing but once they play it you can follow it and sing these are systems the eyes is a very deep and dangerous mystery yes he told the man at get beautiful look at us use your eyes i'm about to talk to you i thought you said give me your ears he said look at us steadfastly and he looked at them and he said now you are seeing what was the requirement of elijah receiving from elijah not if you can hear me if you can was he not looking at him this is your bible i'm not reading an occult book this is your bible when jesus was le was levitating to heaven the bible says they kept looking at him their eyes stayed on him until the cloud received him and something happened to them could it be that the only thing you have been doing with your eyes is to just look around that's why you don't remember the faces of blind people because you cannot see their eyes the 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 part that makes your face recognizable is your eyes let's pray light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light my life. The Bible says, "Doth not wisdom cry. It personifies wisdom. That wisdom is calling on people and say, please, don't attempt to live without me. When the Lord was creating the heavens and the earth, the spirit of wisdom was there. Your life cannot be created without it. 
the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is what is responsible for delivering the secrets of the kingdom without wisdom revelation is not even possible the spirit of wisdom will grant you access to scriptural solutions brothers and sisters you will watch mountains before you crash and people look at you and say what wisdom is this there is a relationship between mighty works and wisdom every time you see mighty works strange results at the back of it is a scriptural solution is a mystery that was unveiled when the spirit of wisdom comes upon you then all other manifestations of the spirit can be made possible without it you are just joking around i saw this in my life i craved for the spirit of wisdom i pursued it with my life and my all the day the spirit of wisdom came upon me i knew i have been studying the bible but brothers and sisters when the spirit of wisdom comes your results change immediately in a strange way the speakings of the spirit we need this for our families could this be why your ministry has been grounded could this be why our families never rise to certain extent we think the thing is just about more money or more this or more that no please help them we are going to spend two or three minutes crying out in the spirit and say lord a baptism i'm tired of no results in my life i'm tired of foolish decisions in my life pray Pray and let the spirit of wisdom come upon you. Never stranded of solutions. Never stranded of solutions. There is always something to do. There is some, always a way of moving forward. Pray. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Everything that has bread. Everything that has bread. Everything that has bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I receive a baptism of the spirit of wisdom. I receive the grace to manifest supernatural solutions over every challenge of my life. Lift your voice and pray. There is an answer. There has to be an answer. There is an answer. There is an answer. Hey, bakata, kata, balakata. I can't be stranded forever. There is an answer. Seke toko shoto barakata. Hidden in the spirit of wisdom is an answer. A strange answer. Lord, there is an answer to my financial predicament. There is an answer to the challenge in my life. That you have not seen it and you have not received it does not mean it is not there. There has to be an answer to the challenges in my family. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive a strategy say it in the name of Jesus I receive the strategy out of confusion out of pain out of tragedy lift your voice and begin to pray there has to be a strategy he made his ways known to Moses by the spirit of wisdom 
There has to be a way. I cannot beg forever. There is a way to the anointing. There is a way to my ministry rising. There is a way. There is a way. There has to be a way. I receive, I receive divine strategies, illumination. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And I'm standing here only because you move mountains. Listen, let me give us one more prayer. By the grace of God, we are a people of prayer. Most of the churches and the body of believers within this region are a people who have received the spirit of prayer and supplication. But we lack the grace for creativity. We lack the grace for imagination. The breath of the spirit upon your mind I like you to pray and say, Lord, grant me the grace to meditate. The grace to bet solutions from the realm of the spirit. The grace to use my mind to allow the Holy Ghost breathe upon my mind. Are you praying? God gave you a mind to bring victory to your life. He gave you a mind not just to watch things happen. Believe me, the solution is locked up within you. Allow the Holy Spirit to begin his work of creation. The answer will come. Pray. Baptize my mind. Baptize my mind. There is an answer locked up by the Holy Ghost. My mind can produce supernatural solutions. Hallelujah. Listen. The worst, the worst condition of a man is madness. In my opinion, the worst condition of a man is madness. Where the devil has hijacked your capacity to create. This is how companies come into being. This is how churches increase and expand. This is how business corporations rise. This is how individuals rise. They can stay with the Holy Ghost and say there's got to be a way. And they stay there and stay there until something comes from heaven. And they run with it and the vision speaks in the end. And their lives look miraculous. There is no mystery behind it. It's the sacrifice of meditation. Every religion, every sect, agrees on this one thing that meditation brings creation hallelujah lord may my mind be a channel for strategies to come from heaven lift your voice and pray may my mind be a channel you didn't give me a mind just to gossip and loiter around stop all this moving up and down and sit down Sit down with the Holy Ghost. Sit down. Let him breathe upon your eyes. Let him breathe upon your ears. Let him breathe upon your mind. 
and my brother my sister your life will change in a way that will surprise you it's a guarantee that I give you the hidden wisdom that the princes did not know hallelujah the Bible says for as he thinketh in his heart so is he so God used that strategy and slew the lamb from the foundations of the earth so there was no problem to it manifesting because it had been a reality the plan of salvation go to come let us build a city it is a carry blocks he said sit down let's build a city and they gave access to demon spirits to begin to brood on their creativity they saw it happening and the bible says in chapter 11 from verse 5 that god came down they had not started building but the Bible says God came down to see the city which the Son of Man had built it. They had finished it. If you don't believe what I'm saying, you will never do anything great. This is it. The Spirit of God with the raw material of your mind, not business, not job, stay with finish that work with him that's why there is nobody who cannot rise your little one room with roaches around no problem use it as the place like the cave of Adullam start from there it's unfortunate when you rise without knowing what you did because there is then no way you teach people he said that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled listen you see this is what makes you confident in your results you know how they came and you know what to keep doing that's why you see ministries after 45 years still standing the people are not fools when you see great men like our father bishop Weediko and and um, papa uh, um, 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 Adeboe, you see all of them talk you think they are arrogant they are not fools that's why Bill Gates remains the wealthiest man. That's why all of these people come. They replace him for a moment today. He gets back again. And all of them keep recycling among their circle. It never goes anywhere. Because they know. They have lost the ability to allow any other thing incubate negativism. It's the mystery behind the wealthy getting wealthier. And the poor getting wealthier. Poorer. Because all they see keeps making sure they remain there. The only thing they make the contact with and hear are things that keep reprogramming. Like you have water cycle, you have nitrogen cycle, you have poverty cycle, you have wealth cycle, where things reinforce themselves again. When I started working in the anointing, my eyes did not see so much results. So sometimes you need to push through. But because I have made contact with the result, it has created a cycle. You see that? So you are not trying to get the power of God to move. Your mind has been indoctrinated. It has become a stronghold that the power of God can move. So the Holy Spirit comes through your mind like neural paths will teach us in neurology that every time you think the brain can create pathways to repeat those thoughts again. That's what happens to you. The Bible lets us know that a man can be alive and yet lack wisdom. That means the same way a doctor can diagnose a patient and say you have deficiency of calcium. You are alive. You are not dead. You are still alive. But there is deficiency of calcium, deficiency of magnesium, and that component is in a drug or some kind of treatment given to you. And as you swallow those pills, you are taking into your system the magnesium or the calcium that you do not have. It can come in form of food, it can come in form of a pill. But whilst you take it, you are aware that the calcium that I lack, I'm now taking it in. And usually they would give you a few indices that can help you know that that which you did not have has now arrived. Listen carefully. You can actually look at your life as a report card and you can know whether or not there is the presence of wisdom 
and if you find out that there is the absence of wisdom the bible also leaves us with a strategy to transport wisdom from wherever it is into your life now this is powerful but you have to admit that men can lack wisdom james chapter 1 and verse 5 we'll go back we'll go back to that scripture but just to let you know from scripture it says if any of you lack wisdom just stop there forget about what you do later on but that there is a possibility that a man can walk on earth a man of god can lack wisdom a businessman can lack wisdom a politician can lack wisdom it has nothing to do with being good or bad the same way a car as wonderful as that car is it can lack fuel when the car does not have the gas that moves it forward it remains at that position everyone say wisdom so wisdom is the supernatural ability to take advantage of the truth from God's word both written and inspired and they now guide you to make excellent decisions in life and by the principles you are able to come up with supernatural solutions that attend to the needs first your need and then the need of those around you that any man who is able to attain this state is considered from scripture to carry the spirit of wisdom may that be your testimony tonight in the name of jesus christ hallelujah so we understand that as a result of redemption one of the sevenfold prophetic reality the blessings that have been given to the saints in christ one of them is wisdom and that more than just a gift of wisdom more than just the word of wisdom there is the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom how to access wisdom we're on a journey right now like spiritual archaeologists let us find where this wisdom is seeing that the presence of wisdom is the secret to an excelling life an excelling ministry an excelling family an excelling business even an excelling spiritual life it then means that anyone who is serious with god and serious with destiny must search for this wisdom wherever it is and that when you find it because the bible says that wisdom is the principal thing we're getting there shortly it says in all you're getting get wisdom get understanding he said exalt her and she shall promote you she will put an ornament a crown of glory upon your head when thou dost embrace her look at wisdom speaking to you he says by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness that those who seek me early those who love me they will find me there is timing to the pursuit of wisdom lack of wisdom is costly especially in the world that we live in today follow me please to the book of job job 28 be patient and i'd like you to carry the determination of an archaeologist as we study this scripture we are searching for wisdom we want to find it and so desperately open our hearts to embrace it are you ready surely mm, Job is speaking now. How many of you know that there is a dimension of wisdom that comes through pain? When you suffer beyond the threshold, there is an impartation. The haziness that foolishness brings can be eroded through the presence of pain. This man, at this time, he's lost everything. His reputation, whatever it is. Sometimes you just need to lose all these things. The prodigal son, provided he had supplies, his wisdom began to diminish until he got to a point where he was feeding with the swine. The Bible never said the Holy Ghost spoke to him. The Bible said he came to himself. Look the kind of wisdom that came out of that pain. Surely there is a vein for the silver and there is a place for gold where it is found. Is that true? 
Do we agree with this statement? Of course, there are gold mines, there are silver mines. It says iron is taken out of the earth and brass is molten out of the stone. Uh huh. He set it an end to darkness and searched out all perfections, the stones of darkness, the shadows of death. Next verse, please. It says the flood breaketh out from the inhabitants, you know, and they are dried up, they are gone away from men. It's a long reading, just be patient. It says, as for the earth, out of it cometh bread. Good information for you. You're searching for where bread is. The Bible tells you it's not in a bakery. Bread is found from the earth. That means there is something you can do to the earth to command and force your portion out of it. Let me tell you what this means. This is not where I'm teaching. I just thought it was a point I should not let to just pass like that. This earth is not just talking of the ground. It's also talking of men. That the secret to your bread is men. So when God wants to give you bread, he brings you to encounter men. Next verse. Verse 6. And the stones of it are the place of sapphires. And it had the dust of gold. There is a path which no fowl know it. You know how high the fowl can fly? But it says there is a path which no fowl know it. And the vulture's eye hath not seen. The lion's whelps have not trodden it. Nor the fierce lion passed by it. Remember what we are looking for. We are looking for the location of wisdom. He put it forth his hand upon the rock. He overturned the mountains by the roots. Uh-huh. He cut it out rivers from among rocks, and his eyes see it every precious thing. Keep reading. He binded the floods from overflowing, and the thing that is hidden he brings forth to light. Verse 12. It says, But where shall wisdom be found? So look, look, look the look the 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 the, the artistry of Job. He begins by showing us where some of the things we admire on earth. He says their location has been found. We don't have a problem looking for where gold is, where silver is, where iron is. Men have used advanced technology to excavate rocks to find minerals. But there is a particular spiritual resource we are still looking for. And Job said, where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Hmm. Our journey begins. It says, man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. That means CBN does not have it. That means our institutions do not have this kind of wisdom. It already gives you a clue that as you begin this archaeological journey, let me tell you where not to waste your time. Expo, it is not found in the land of the living there is a kind that is found in the land of the living but not this one next verse the depth saith it is not in me find other minerals but not this one the sea do you know what is hidden in the sea abundance in the earth hides in the sea the bible says but this wisdom the sea says among the resources that were hidden there this one is not part of them The Bible says it cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of offer. And the precious onyx or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. And you are not looking for it? It says, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls. It says, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The toppers of Ethiopia shall not equal it. Neither shall it be valued with pure gold. We are still looking for wisdom. Whence then cometh wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? Hallelujah. Seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living. And it is kept close from the fowls of the air. Destruction and death say we have heard of its fame. Come on. Look at the testifiers of the exploits of wisdom. That destruction and, 
and death came to hold a mic and give a testimony that as we go around destroying people we have heard of this wisdom the fame we have heard of it that anyone who possesses this can beat us hands down we have heard of the fame thereof here is your answer God understandeth the way thereof and he knoweth the place thereof hmm. so after confusing us and leading us from pillar to post he now tells us that listen there is no archangel that holds this wisdom that God only God knows the way of wisdom and he is the exclusive custodian of this priceless commodity the wisdom that comes from above the wisdom that comes from above please pay attention I have seen people who carry in bodily form the spirit of wisdom I have seen people manifest natural wisdom I have seen people manifest scientific and philosophical wisdom with the various degrees of results that support the kind of wisdom they carry I have also seen people access demonic wisdom but I have seen a few people and I'm glad that this happened in my lifetime people who access superior levels of wisdom many years ago as the Lord was preparing me for ministry I listened to Pat Robertson the founder of 700 club CBN and he said as a young man when he was about to start ministry he prayed for three things he said Lord give me wisdom number two give me favor number three give me the anointing of the Holy Ghost I wrote it down quickly and I prayed the same prayer too I said Lord I don't trust this my head I don't trust what I know give me wisdom number two give me favor and number three give me the anointing of the Holy Spirit and then the Holy Ghost spoke to me he said follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise the proof of passion is pursuit and I began that journey aware of the the many shades of ignorance and lack of wisdom in my life I admitted the fact that if this kind of wisdom cannot be found it automatically or just because you have answered the call of God you have it automatically I don't mean to insult your pedigree but I present to you a that the all-surpassing excellence of this wisdom can be felt pray and say father let me encounter the spirit of wisdom tonight give me an encounter this wisdom can only be found in god only be found in god for the way of the lord the lord I'm tired of my current results, oh God. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of... I want to show you, you see, everything that comes from God, even though it is a gift, it has conditions. In the cheapest and the greatest gift, in as much as it is a gift, Romans chapter 8 from verse 10 from verse 8 down to 12 tells us that there is a condition. In fact, many conditions. At a personal level, the condition is that you believe with your heart, confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and then you are saved. It says, for with the heart man um, confesses, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Is that true? And then when you go down to, I think, verse 15, it begins to say, even this man, you see, how shall they, go to verse 14, please. It says, how shall they call on him whom they have not believed? So believing is the key to calling on him. And how shall they believe if they have not heard? 
hearing is the key to believing and how shall they hear without a preacher so a preacher is the key to hearing not just the word of god a preacher is the key to hearing i am the voice he is the word but i am the voice that cries and then next verse says how shall they preach except they be sent so you are sent to preach you preach they hear they hear they believe they believe they call upon god they call upon him they receive salvation this is how it works according to scripture mm. are we blessed there are conditions to access the spirit of wisdom number one now please look up let me just teach you something before we delve into this Actor of scripture to hide spiritual possibilities in the life and the stories of men are we together now that means every time you begin to search for a dimension of spiritual reality your first element for instance is to understand the blessing of the lord and god's idea of what it means to be blessed in this kingdom then you go to isaiah chapter 51 from verse 1 and 2 that is the biblical recommendation it says to look unto abraham verse 2 your father and to sarah that bore you for i call him alone and blessed him and increased him that means to understand my idea of a blessed man under study Abraham if you want to understudy the ministry of prayer the Bible takes you in James chapter 5 from verse 13 down to 18 it now brings you to this personality called Elijah it says Elijah was a man of like passion so you use the person Elijah to understand the power of prevailing prayer are we together now if you seek encounters and you want to understand the protocol to a spiritual encounter the bible tells us that the personality the go-to personality is this man called jacob in chapter 28 of genesis chapter 32 of genesis then chapter 24 of psalms this is the generation of them that seek thee they, that seek thy face O jacob king james says but the original translation says oh god of jacob so God recommends the encounter of Jacob as the protocol for finding him. Are, are we learning now? Yes. You don't blindly begin to search for truths just like that. They are personified. If you are learning favor, you want to see the power of God's deliverance, that God is able to deliver men. The nation of Israel from Egypt is the classic expression of deliverance. So you understood what did they do? Number one, they were in captivity. How did God help them? He brought a man, trained that man. Are we together now? By signs and wonders, he brought them out through his mighty, his mighty hands. The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning. So that we, through the comfort of scripture, might find hope. So now we are discussing wisdom. It is only wise and obvious that we re make reference to the personality that was identified from scripture as the wisest man, second only to Jesus Christ. Is that true? So we are going to understudy the life of Solomon, the man that the Bible says is the wisest man. Because once upon a time, he did not have the manifestation of wisdom. So what happened? First Kings chapter 3. Hmm. Verse 3. The first condition to access the spirit of wisdom please do not miss this is that you must have passionate love for god and for his program passionate love not just love passionate love for god the spirit of wisdom comes not just upon prayer warriors but genuine lovers of god not users of god not church goers not just bible study giants but lovers of god no eye has seen, no ear has heard, the Bible says, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for them that love him. But he has revealed it to them by his spirit. 
So the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is a love affair. As we learn from this reference, Solomon. Read with me, please, verse 3. One, two, read. And Solomon loved the Lord. Hold on. He never said, and Solomon wanted wisdom. He didn't say Solomon wanted fame. He didn't say Solomon wanted a name. Solomon loved the Lord. Notice the two people that are references of wisdom. The Bible starts by telling us of their love life. For God so loved the world, he gave his son as proof of love. Solomon now also loved. It's interesting that true wisdom starts with love. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Is that true? Only he sacrificed, burn incense in high places. And then the second condition very quickly. If you want to access wisdom, you must have a sincere desire. Please keep that scripture there. Number one, passionate love for God and his agenda. Number two, you must have a sincere desire to be a blessing. The spirit of wisdom cannot come on an individual who is not committed to being a blessing because wisdom manifests itself in supernatural solutions that bless all and sundry. So there must be a passion and a determination in your heart. You want the spirit of wisdom to come and elevate you in business, in ministry, in politics, in every area of your life. You must have a passion to be a blessing. Let's read verse, um, we're going to begin to read from verse 8 and 9. We'll come back, but then let's just look at it. Verse 8 and 9. Now, in fact, let's just start from verse 4 down to 9. Media help us. It says, the king went to Gibeon and to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. And the Bible says, a thousand bond offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. Uh -huh. Next verse. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night and said, Ask what I will give thee. This, ladies and gentlemen, was the ultimate test of selflessness and a desire to be a blessing. It is not an angel saying you should ask. It is the God of the Bible who has everything. Perhaps if I was the one who was asked that, I would say, God, get a notebook. You don't know where I'm coming from. Get a notebook. Hmm. The Lord said, Ask what I shall give thee. Verse 6. And Solomon said, Hallelujah. Look at the expression of selflessness, the determination to be a blessing. Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. Uh -huh. So he's talking about rulership. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of my father, David, and I am but a little child. Ah, this man knows what to do with God. There is, there is a language that when you use with God, eh, you are ready to receive something from him. I am but a child. I know not how to go out or how to come in because it is wisdom that gives direction. He's saying, I am void of wisdom and I admit it. There's no need spending my life experimenting and returning back in pain. Then verse 8. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen. A great people, he said, that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude. Verse 9. Here was his request. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. What for? To judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this this so great thy people notice he did not he keep that scripture there please he didn't ask for himself my brothers and sisters i've had a few encounters with the lord and i can tell you this there are kairos moments where when you have an opportunity that's when the flesh will say you better say it quickly speed promotion 
all kinds of things the life of my enemies and God was listening to the Lord the, the Solomon and Solomon said Lord I desire an understanding heart what we call wisdom and the reason why I need it is because of my passion to be an effective leader my passion to be a blessing can I tell you this everything that God gives you flows through you but should not stop with you if it stops with you even though he gave you it will kill you listen to what I'm telling you everything God gives you provided it came from God it flows through you and you will benefit from it but ultimately it must move past you if God gives you an anointing if God gives you wealth, if God gives you influence, if he gives you increase, if he gives you intelligence, a platform, whatever it is. When he sends a word to Jacob, his intent is that it gets to Israel. Are we learning? So you must have a desire to be a blessing. Please say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it if you can't say in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to be passionate about being a blessing I look beyond myself hmm. now this is a very strange language especially in this our world today the world of I me myself to hell with whatever happens to anybody provided I am enjoying You will never access the spirit of wisdom, ladies and gentlemen. Lonia, uh -huh, to what end? Myself. So that I'll have a common insight into the world. To what end? Myself. The moment the language is self, you will not come. There are people who seek all kinds of spiritual virtues, not just wisdom alone. They seek the anointing, they fast and they pray, but the corruption that is behind that, they just want it to come. Let us make mortar, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach the heavens and let us make it. It's about Jesus, Christ enthroned, that everything that flows through you flows to become a blessing. A blessing me for the sake of your people. And God says, okay. I see that you are a faithful treasurer. You want me to trust you with the wealth of the kingdom? Yes, Lord. You will benefit if you disappointed me. Let me find you. And he will trust you with dimensions of grace that you may not have known that to exist. The third key to access, the third condition to access the spirit of wisdom is found in 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 4. It's called the law of sacrifice. Solomon offered a thousand bond offerings. Sacrifice here does not just talk about finances alone. There has to be total surrender. In this case, he offered offerings. But there are levels of sacrifice where you are the offering. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. Listen. There are times that God is not looking for what comes from you. You are the sacrifice he's looking for. You want to receive an investment, a rich investment of the spirit of wisdom. You must become that sacrifice. The Bible says, I beseech thee, brethren, by the message of the Lord, that ye offer your bodies unto God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of service. There are people who bring money and they give God and he says, carry your money away. What I'm looking for is your heart. Do you know why? Because you see, the kind of results you command when the spirit of wisdom is at work in you, God must have your heart. If not, it will destroy you. The pride that comes from the excellency of that result is the reason why many people do not last as God begins to lift them. I'll be showing you the benefits of this spirit. I am telling you when the spirit of wisdom comes upon you, men will almost worship you because of the kind of result that comes from your life. But if you have become that sacrifice, you're on the altar and everything that comes through your life only becomes for his glory. 
You can't scam God and play politics with him and say, Lord, just grant me the spirit. Don't worry, I'll return back. He says, no. I have watched men for decades. I know the vulnerability and the tendencies in their hearts. The power of the spirit of wisdom is so, I'm telling you in one month, one month, your life can so change, your ministry can so change, your business can so change, you will marvel and wonder at what you become. And so before he invests that dimension of grace on you, he now tells you, sacrifice. Solomon offered, please look, look with me. Imagine, imagine that this entire altar is full of bulls. And you are cutting them one by one and heaven is watching 1000 please keep that scripture there verse 4 1000 for some of you you think 1000 is not much go and try to buy one ram right now with the current economic situation a healthy well-built ram one i don't know how much they sell but you go and try to buy it or one cow even if someone pushes it down it will stand up but you will still be angry that you paid so much and they're pushing that cow down and here is a man who just watched this and said let's start with 100 and he killed 100 and then he killed 200 and i can imagine the angel saying what is going on here 300 400 and he says no it's not enough add some more i want to show him how much i love him and God is saying it's not about the cows who is doing something to something that is so close to what my son is going to be doing this guy is about to give everything 800 cows or rams 850 900 950 and he still said let's add some more and he said angel stay back you don't need to go I will go myself this kind of sacrifice can I tell you this there are sacrifices both financial and otherwise that are representations of your passion and seriousness with God when you commit yourself to those levels of deep sacrifices you open yourself for encounters do you know there is a level of sacrifice that automatically becomes a covenant Psalm 50 verse 5 give it to us please let me show you from scripture it is it's not a covenant that you enter willfully. It says, gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me. How? There is a level of passion and hunger. God sees you giving so much for the kingdom. And he says, you are doing this for me? God sees you promoting the kingdom in ways that you are going out of your way like a madman. There was something Solomon understood. And the Bible says that night, not the next day, God came to him and said, you are calling me. Solomon said, did I call you? He says, your sacrifice. There are many of you, your hearts, you have not given anything in your life that has touched the heart of God to really command his presence this is not coercion in any way to inconvenience you but it's the truth can I tell you this behind the uncommon people you see God using world over today there is a dimension of sacrifice hmm. you know most times when people see God using an individual marvelously people begin to think it's just luck or you are lucky or you were fortunate to just find someone who laid hands on you my brothers and my sisters behind every story of genuine lasting exploit is blood dripping on the altar a testament of sacrifice you want to access the spirit of wisdom God must vet you until you die the sacrifice of your time the sacrifice of your reputation, the sacrifice of your ego, the sacrifice of your resources, the sacrifice of your intelligence. If it is the wisdom that comes from above you are looking for, you have to get to that point where you say, Lord, take everything. Ask anybody you admire. Ask anybody 
who manifests on common dimensions of results there is a sacrifice component as the condition that brought either the anointing or the wisdom of the spirit are we together anoint my everything use my everything i release my everything you have my everything take all of me all of me you have my everything all of me lord you have my everything you have my everything use my everything i release my everything take my everything say take all of me all of me lord you have my everything use all of me all of me lord sacrifice listen you know you have given all when there is nothing left again abraham take thy son thy only son whom thou lovest take your reputation the only one that you spent 30 years building take it to a mountain take your resources the one that you pride on oh it is by my strength that i'm a millionaire by my strength i'm a billionaire look what my intelligence has given me and god says if it's business you want to do with me let me show you how we do business in this kingdom i do not come to people who are strong when my strength finds strength it goes back it waits until you are empty let me tell you this there's nothing wrong with confession but there is a mistake we keep making in the body of christ there are times respectfully speaking not to mock or spite it but this blind claiming that we claim everything just like that no there are positive confessions but there are foolish claims that never lead to any results there is a real price not everything is a gift there are things that are rewards and if we do not balance this we will continue to mock ourselves jumping up and down and never be able to command results you want the spirit of wisdom lavishly at work in your life sacrifice so that god can call you today listen god can call you and say help them please he says you are a billionaire but i want you to leave that meeting come and you say yes sir after all i was dead before they even knew me hear me man of god if you want the spirit of wisdom to come upon you to command exploits in ministry it's more than a bible school it's more than just hands being laid on you death sacrifice there is nothing in my life today i tell you sincerely by the god of heaven there is nothing in my life today that i cannot give god nothing and be careful don't say that because god will vet you god take everything he says thank you he knows what to touch it's easy to give ishmael you can say ishmael leave but he says it's not ishmael i want take isaac isaac is a symbol of your future isaac is a symbol of your reputation isaac is a symbol the epicenter of your self-worth take it to a mountain if it's power you want in this kingdom if it's an investment of the spirit you want this one is not something you claim this one is a cup you drink and a baptism you are baptized into you want the spirit of wisdom to be at work in you the grace that subdues systems and structures dominion at a level and a frequency that confounds principalities and powers this one comes from above
I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord. Your royal majesty. Yabone nakao. Sujada ne nakao. There is something I know about sacrifice. Sacrifice is a magnet. It can call dimensions of God. There were people who encountered wisdom at the frequency of desperation and sacrifice. Please sit down. We'll soon be praying. Let me share with you an encounter one time. I don't like to tell too much of my stories because I like for people to place their faith on the Word of God and not just the experience of a man but sometimes it's good to bring some of these encounters I remember when I was passionately praying and desperately seeking for the spirit of wisdom in my life I had seen fathers of faith I studied the largest churches in all the continents at that time and I saw profound display of wisdom in businessmen people in ministry i took out time to pray and pray and i said lord please grant by your spirit if this is true let the holy spirit reveal himself as the spirit of wisdom in this life the apostolic call has the spirit of wisdom as the principal signature more than the miraculous because of the ministry of spiritual governance and I had an encounter that night. Listen very carefully. I was, there was a long queue of people and I was serving bread. And this bread was full of honey inside. Like you put um, jam or butter or something, you know. And then there was a machine there. This was how God gave me a revelation of the spirit of wisdom. There was a machine there that was producing the bread. It came out automatic with, the, with honey, dripping with honey. And I was collecting it and I was serving people. There was a long queue. But the shock was that the people were not seeing the machine. So they were looking at me, where is this guy getting this thing from? I kept giving them, I kept giving them. I kept giving them, I kept giving them. I was surprised myself. The machine just produces it. I pick it up and give them. And they were eating. They were people who were hungry. You could look at their hunger, ravaged faces. They were there, desperate and thirsty. And that was when I knew by the Spirit that I had received an impartation of this grace. There is such a grace called the Spirit of Wisdom where god will come to you in the night and just say this is how the next five years will be just do this this is why there is no boasting no when the spirit of wisdom comes upon you your life will look deceptively slow except that one step you take under the influence of that spirit will be 10 years in one pay attention to what i'm telling you spirit of wisdom sacrifice many of us do not pay attention to the sacrifice dimension of wisdom let me give you the fourth I gave you four conditions number one passionate love for God and his agenda number two a sincere passionate desire to be a blessing number three 
sacrifice of your time your resources anything the goal of that sacrifice is to bring you to a point of surrender and death to yourself and then number four you receive this wisdom by asking of the lord first kings again chapter 3 and verse 9 four conditions you do not receive the spirit of wisdom if you do not ask give therefore thy servant an understanding heart give therefore joshua selman the spirit of wisdom to be able to effectively birth the things that you desire to be birthed through this life james chapter 1 and verse 5 still on asking asking is a very important component in the kingdom it says if any of you lack wisdom let him not let him ask of a man of god who has it no the man of god who has it is not the source of the wisdom he's only the channel that the spirit flows through the person you ask is the owner not the caretaker many of us are asking the caretakers that's not your assignment you are not called to go and look for people just by default you ask the owner lord everything belongs to you i desire the spirit of wisdom it is that owner now who knows his authorized dealers go to them that sell and buy but there must be someone who tells you go to them that sell not everybody is in need there are people who have it go to them that sell and buy if you lack wisdom ask of God that give it to all men how many men this manifestation of wisdom is not for men of God it's not for those in ministry it's not for those in business it's for everyone who seeks to see Jesus revealed and glorified in and through your life that you want to accomplish you want to fulfill destiny he says he gives liberally and upbraided not and it shall be given to him because the law is for everyone that asketh, he shall receive. Everyone that seeketh, he shall find. And to him that knocketh, he says the door shall be opened. Ask of the Lord. There are times that you can lock yourself and pray and say, Father, I confess before you that my life is limited. The reason why my finances are down is not because of the economy. The finances are down because of my belief systems. There is, there is the absence of wisdom. Even if the economy changes, it will not affect me. I need wisdom. The reason why I am down is because wisdom has not elevated me to the throne. By me, kings reign. And princes decree justice. Lord, I ask you for wisdom. Mm. Grant me the spirit of wisdom. And God says, I have seen your heart. You love me passionately. I have seen how selfless you are. I've seen how sacrificial you are. Now let me recommend you to a place where you can get that wisdom. Come for koinonia. And you will access the spirit of wisdom. One of the ways that God exposes you to the spirit of wisdom is to bring you to the atmosphere where that spirit is at work. That's what happened to Saul in the Bible. To go to a garrison of the prophets. You just go and stand there. If you want to receive a miracle in a crusade ground, you have to go near, go close where God is ministering. The probability of you receiving is highest when you are close there. Are we learning? Praise the name of the Lord. Now, let me wrap up before we pray very quickly. The character of wisdom is such that there is a system of expressing it. It's not enough to have wisdom. You must know how wisdom, the outworkings of wisdom, I call it. You must know and you must learn how wisdom manifests. Are we together now? So even if you have received that investment of the spirit, there, you have to understand the dynamics of releasing the, the spirit of wisdom. And I want to give it to you very quickly. Number one. Wisdom 
is revealed and released in the believer through number one the sacrifice of meditation the sacrifice of meditation proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 please understand don't confuse what we are dealing with now how do i release the wisdom that has now come i have received it but i need it to find expression through desire a man having separated himself the bible says he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom wisdom is dimensional meditation can give you every dimension of wisdom divine direction is a subset of wisdom divine strategies is a subset of wisdom Daniel chapter 2 please let's look at Daniel chapter 2 we'll begin our reading from verse 14 Daniel chapter 2 and verse 14 please prepare your hearts to receive watch this this was when the king the king slept forgot his dream can you imagine how kings thought those days you forget your dream you slept by yourself on your bed forgot your dream and you are going to kill everybody because you are angry then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said unto Ariok, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty? That means the manifestation of wisdom takes time. Beware of hasty decisions. True wisdom allows the spirit of God to rest upon you. There is a time component to manifesting wisdom God gives speed but he's not hasty he says why is the decree so hasty from the king then Ariok made the thing known unto Daniel verse 16 then Daniel went in listen and desired of the king that he should give him what so when you need wisdom you need time time that comes through meditation the outworkings of wisdom just give me time and I'll bring you a supernatural solution. Even though the spirit of wisdom is upon me, he does not walk carelessly. He walks with time. And that time is spent in meditation. Now watch this. He said that he should give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Uh -huh. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Ananiah, Michelle, Azariah, his companions. Verse 18. That they would desire mercies of God, the God of heaven concerning this secret. That Daniel and his followers should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. 19. Hallelujah. Read with me. Then the secret was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. You see how the spirit of wisdom works. Meditation. The sacrifice of meditation. Do you know that there are many non-Christian sects that understand this principle? They would stay for a long time with a clean sheet. Find out some of the top CEOs of conglomerates around the world. They just sit down. Sometimes they go on a vacation. You think they are swimming around and you see them sitting under a tree or somewhere just taking the cool breeze and they are just meditating and sitting quietly. And then one idea comes from heaven that that defines the next 10 years the spirit of wisdom walks through the sacrifice of meditation I cannot begin to tell you ideas things that have come by the spirit of wisdom as I sat down sometimes in the night where everywhere is silent and I just sit down I'm just playing worship like this and I'm quiet do you know the Bible says be still and you will no there is a level of knowledge that comes when you are still lord i don't know how i'm going to do ministry i don't know how to go about this but i give you praise i remember i say some of these things to encourage us it's really no secret i remember when god was preparing us to start the work here one night i, I just sat down and i was just praying and then I kept quiet for more than 30 minutes. And there his voice came, the spirit of wisdom. The Lord made me to buy the map of Abuja, just a map of Abuja, Nigeria, Africa, and the entire globe. And I bought all of them. 
and he said i should lay my hands and begin to pray and speak over it and speak over the territory divine strategies by the spirit of wisdom and with that childlike behavior you ask the forces over this territory what happened a territory does not just open because you have something to say there are controlling powers but one manifestation of the spirit of wisdom can help to keep them where they belong this is not in an arrogant sense some of you did not inquire from the spirit of wisdom you went alone to start business you had capital and all you did was to open a shop don't feel bad that's why you are here and you just gathered goods and sat down there and he said no do you not know let me tell you how the spirit of wisdom comes it comes largely through scripture you are sitting down wondering why is my business not growing for instance lord why is this not write all the problems and then keep them before the lord writing down the problems is proof that you expect an answer lord i will wait speak to me and one by one his voice will start coming how am I going to raise 1 billion, 10 billion for this project? And all that I have in my account, home and abroad, is 500,000. And the Holy Ghost comes with the spirit of wisdom. You don't need 10 billion. You only need men. Because money hides in men. So, don't think you cannot start the project because of money. Relationships are cheaper. Go and start learning how to build relationships. The spirit of wisdom. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And you get up and say, okay, Lord, what do I do? And he says, here's the deal. I will grant you favor and I will connect you with gatekeepers. Start from there. And the next thing you enter your office and a CEO that you have no business knowing. And you remember that was my deal. And because you have mastered relationships, you understand the law of honor. Good afternoon, sir. And the spirit of God rides through your understanding and makes the man to say, who are you? You're a young man. You look visionary. What do you do? He says, sir, well, we thank God. I'm, I'm still putting plans together. See me tomorrow. A connection has begun that will let her birth you to become a billionaire. When people ask you and you say, I don't know, you are right, but you are wrong. Don't tell them you don't know. It's a manifestation of the spirit of wisdom. One thing connecting to the other. Someone can sit down and your life is not moving forward and you sit down meditating. Lord, there has to be a way. No matter how long there is a way and I trust you. This is why I am here. Suddenly, the spirit of wisdom comes. Breathes upon you. James chapter 2 and verse 26. Let me tell you why you have been failing. There is no spirit component to what you are doing. A body without a spirit is dead. Your shop is only a body. There is no spirit back in it. Your political career is only a body. There is no spirit back in it. Oh dear politician, your intelligence is only a body. There is no spirit back in it. So when you introduce the spirit component to anything you are doing, you now give it life. Wisdom has come to you. The sacrifice of meditation. Number two. How do you access the spirit of wisdom? Luke chapter 21 and verse 15. Let's look at Amplify. The ways that you access the spirit of wisdom, listen carefully, is as you open your mouth to speak by faith, it says, I will give you a mouth and such utterance and wisdom that all of your foes combined will be unable to stand or refute. There are many times you have to go by faith. You are in the boardroom. And now you are about to speak and wisdom works like word of knowledge you at the point you do not even know what to say yet but by faith and in the name of Jesus believing you have the investment of that spirit you open your mouth and you begin to communicate things that later on you will have to listen to what you said yourself because you know you are not the one speaking this is how many people got jobs they went by faith because the spirit of wisdom was there and they had all kinds of executives sitting there and they were standing there though shaking like a leaf they believed they were not alone 
young man what do you intend to do for this company and the person does not know what to say and suddenly here he comes and boldness and you begin to speak and articulate with such level of uncanny intelligence this is what i seek to bring this is what i seek to bring and they look at you and say where have you been when you go out of that place you can't even remember what you said open your mouth and i will feel it are you learning something when you open up your mouth matthew chapter 10 please from verse 19 and 20 when you speak and you make decisions you give room for the spirit of wisdom to come up it says but when they deliver you up take no thought how or what ye shall speak for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak verse 20 it says for it is not ye that speak hallelujah but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you i was in bonnie bonnie island a few maybe a month or two ago and i had a wonderful tour you know they just showed us the oldest cathedral and when they were talking about one i think it was uh, bishop joseph johnson now i think i hope i got that right and there was a pulpit there and uh, the people who were helping us with the tour were just explaining something that happened the guy prepared his notes and he was going to preach and i think something i don't know what it is that happened and maybe he lost his notes or something and he stood there he was shaking he did not know what to say and fire just came and the spirit of wisdom and revelation came upon that man and he began to speak that was how his first message came can I tell you, there are times you have to close your eyes by faith and just say something. You will find out that it did not come out as foolish as you thought it would be. Because the Holy Spirit edited it before it came out. Number three. How does the outworking of the spirit of wisdom how does it work creative thinking write it down innovative and creative thinking job chapter 32 and verse 8 this is the young man elihu speaking job 32 here's what he had to say but there is a spirit in a man or a man and the inspiration everyone please say inspiration creative thinking is powerful this is not about businessmen this is how the mind works the mind was designed to birth supernatural possibilities the moment you drop it in that atmosphere where there is an incubation of destiny altering ideas innovations creative thinking you are a leader here you're a captain of industry find time where you just move away from people and be alone and begin to think allow the holy spirit brood over your mind that's what it means to think creatively in the name of jesus christ what is the next step to this church what is the next step to this company what is the next step to preserving the purposes of god as committed to me and ideas begin to come from your spirit and then one of the ways that god brings draws out this manifestation of wisdom within us is through dreams and visions hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 please when the spirit of wisdom is at work in you do not downplay the power of dreams and visions god who at sundry times and in diverse manners listen carefully he spake in the time past unto the fathers by the prophets by the prophets so he used the prophetic he used dreams and visions i think it's um what's the scripture that says i have used similitudes i have multiplied visions similitudes you can go to bed and suddenly find yourself and the holy spirit is revealing this to you like he did to daniel in chapter 2 and verse 19 then the secret was revealed unto daniel was it not joseph that went to bed and had a dream and his whole destiny played before him i saw the sun 
the moon and 11 stars many of us lose touch we lose the opportunity to release the spirit of wisdom because when we get up with prophetic dreams and visions and encounters we do not document them let me tell you this every time you wake up and you find out that god gave you a dream that you know is prophetic you see the way dreams and visions we have a series on that the way dreams and visions work is you can see part one of that vision in 2017 and keep it the part two will come in 2022 and then you now join it and it makes sense if you do not respect the first part you will not see the second part dreams and vision seldom come complete they come in part because we see in part but you must respect the parts that god has shown you okay god told you you are getting into ministry but he did not tell you the kind of ministry he did not tell you the location he did not tell you the dimension respect the one you have seen so far write it down and start praying over it then another part will come god told you you are going to become a great politician you are going to lead nations you're going to lead territories he didn't tell you in what capacity respect the part he gave you and put it down he says write the vision write the vision before you write the vision you must receive the vision when you receive the vision your next assignment is to write it down are we blessed very very important dreams and visions now proverbs chapter 24 from verse 3 and 4 we're looking at the excellency as we prepare to pray now the excellency of possessing or walking in partnership with the spirit of wisdom number one it says true wisdom is a house built and by understanding it is established please give us verse 3 in amplified amplified it says true skillful and godly wisdom is a house a life a home a family built and by understanding it is established on a sound and a good foundation anything is built by wisdom once it has to do with building whether physically emotionally spiritually financially anything that needs to be built the architect is wisdom you cannot ignore wisdom and expect to build anything that lasts you want to build a ministry that lasts you want to build a business that lasts you want to build a kingdom influence that lasts it will come through the platform of divine wisdom now for study let's just look at one scripture first Kings chapter 3 now we'll look at verse 15 then we'll start from 16 down to 28 that will be our last scripture and then we'll pray now watch this so all that was happening was a dream by the time we get to 15 Solomon woke up my god spiritual things are so powerful imagine if you were Solomon's friend and both of you slept on the same bed you would not know that something of destiny value he would just wake up and stretch himself except that he's not the same person who went to bed and Solomon awoke and behold it was a dream and he came to Jerusalem watch this and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up bond offerings what a man he offered bond offerings for the dream to come when he woke up he offered bond offerings for it to still begin to manifest he made a feast to all his servants next verse verse 16 now this will be the first test of the presence of this dimension of wisdom there's a lesson to learn here and we round up you can know that the spirit of wisdom has come upon you in solomon's case it's about to be tested there came two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him this is a difficult situation right now and the one woman said oh my lord i and this woman dwell in one house 
and I was delivered of a child behind the house. Uh -huh. And it came to pass the third day after I was delivered that this woman was delivered also and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house. Terrible because there is no witness now. So this is a complicated case. There's no witness. Save the two of us in the house. 19. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. That means she laid on the child till the child died. Are you following this difficult puzzle now? And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me. Huh? While thy handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. Are you following the story now? And when I arose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which did bear. 22. The other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. And they spoke before the king. Hmm. Can you imagine such a situation? Two women come to you and they say, one, my child is dead. The other, now the king is about to demonstrate the all-surpassing excellence of this encounter. He's about to know and test for real whether this grace had truly come. Then said the king, the one saith, this is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead. And the other saith, nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. The spirit of wisdom. Keep this scripture there. Let me teach you something to learn. Are you seeing that the king was in a situation right now? That it was a dilemma. He was not in the room with them. And there was no witness. There was nobody to call. Only two women and their two sons. Now they are in a very serious argument. Whatever the king did at that point would go around the nation. He could lose his reputation at that point. What do you then do? There are times when the situation that stands before you defies what you know. It would defy what you studied. It would defy the physical connection. At that time, you will need to outsource the spirit of wisdom. Notice the character of the spirit of wisdom. Until the word of the Lord came, there was no way of discerning. But remember that the word of the Lord which is also this sword of the spirit is quick and powerful is sharper than any two-edged sword it is able to divide asunder the soul and the spirit and this sword that is the word is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the man immediately Solomon stood he said I am confused there has to be a yastic bring me the word the moment he carried the word the spirit of wisdom was ready to walk they brought that sword. It was the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Watch this. That means you walk best in wisdom when you stay with the word of God. The word of God reveals to you how God thinks. And having the mind of Christ enhances the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom. This is very powerful. Bring me a sword. And they brought the sword before the king. Now the word of God started testing them. Watch this. The first test to know the real owner. Watch this now. The first test was the test of love and the test of selflessness. Because all men have self. And whoever is the owner of the child must love the child more than their self greater love had no man than this than a man lay down his life for his friend so he said we are going to divide the child in two we will give half to you and half to the other in other words we are going to destroy this vision we are going to destroy this a child yet does not just talk of a human being it can mean anything destroy this vision into half give one to the other Give one to this. Verse 26. Watch this. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king. For her bowels yearned upon her son. 
are you seeing compassion and love the moment the word of the lord came into the equation the love test the self test it says oh my love please i love this vision more than my reputation let my reputation die but let the vision live and the king was looking said now we are knowing the real owner the word of god is fine is filtering this i love this son do not allow this son die that I, it took me a long time to have this son and i love him more than my reputation don't worry give the woman the most important thing is let the child live let the vision live the word of god the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart and in no wise slay it but the other said let it be neither mine or thine so the real issue was not about the child the real issue was about bitterness it was about envy it was about anger that i am not succeeding so kill this person's child too so that two of us can now not have a child 27 watch this and learn and the king answered and said now that i've used the passion test now that i've used the love test now that i've used the self test this is the real owner she is the mother thereof 28 the bible says and all israel this is the thing about wisdom all israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged and they feared the king for they saw that the wisdom was of god was in him to do judgment what did they see so wisdom can be seen when the wisdom of god rests upon your life you are not the only one who will know you have it everybody around you will know because of the excellence of the judgment that you have are you ready to pray we have about five minutes or so and we're going to pray passionately listen brothers and sisters every destiny here is at the mercy of the manifestation of this spirit upon it I'd, I'd like you to make sure your heart is open for the next five minutes because you are going to cry many of us are at points right now in our lives our ministries different areas of our lives and the cure to break that stagnancy is the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom the cure to foolishness foolish decisions recycling of pain wisdom lift your voice and begin to thank the lord for the word that you've heard tonight there is such a thing as the spirit of wisdom someone is praying all the overflows following online please pray the spirit of wisdom the spirit of wisdom are you praying thank you father for your word tonight Thank you, Jesus. The spirit of wisdom upon my life, upon my destiny. In the name of Jesus. Admit that you need wisdom higher than that which you have seen at work in your life. It is only those who hunger and thirst that are filled. I'd like you to pray in one minute and say father i declare my need i declare my need for wisdom that comes from above an impartation of this wisdom by the holy spirit i need it to walk in my destiny to walk in my relationships to walk in ministry to walk in governance in leadership oh. if any man lack wisdom let him ask of god if any man lack results let him ask of god are you hallelujah hallelujah believe me when i tell you there is a relation when one accesses this level of wisdom there is no limit to how far your results can go you see the thing about wisdom is just when you think you have exhausted a level another layer of that wisdom is opened it is ever increasing glory by the wisdom of to see the manifestation of the wisdom of god providing supernatural solutions lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray
the wisdom of God, the wisdom that comes from above, that is you, we are going to pray. I told you the spirit of God works, the spirit of wisdom works best upon and with a man who sustains the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ means that you have adopted his value systems as revealed from scripture. You must, listen, you must be a student of scripture so that the Holy Spirit can find the tools that he will use to reveal the wisdom of God to you let this mind be in you philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 which was also in christ jesus permit this mind to be in you you must replace your thinking with the word of god believe me when i tell you that everything around your life will revolve around your belief system the wisdom of god presents the wisest perspective on all matters there are many perspectives but the wisdom of god presents the wisest perspective on all matters you are going to pray lord a passion for the word not only to study it but to have it in me not only to study it but to have it in me to become a living epistle when satan came to jesus the fountain of wisdom he replied by saying it is written even though the holy ghost was upon him but what came out was it is written there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and make you blessed there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and make you rise there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and connect you to strange relationships there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and bring you to greater levels of the anointing of influence of power there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and bring you increase in your organization hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Now, if, if you allow me to do this, since I'm, I'm not here alone, I'm glad and honored that Apostle Goodhart is here. I, I didn't inform him, but I, I hope you're not embarrassed. I would want to plead with him, even if it's just for a minute, to just come. And now that there is such an anointing here, I'm going to ask him to come. I'm also going to plead that Reverend Akila come. He will just speak in one minute, just declaring the word of god and the power of god's wisdom to rest upon you and then reverend akila will declare and apostle goodhart will declare and i'll just round up will that be fine please let's honor the lord as the servants of god come up very quickly praise the name of the lord these are veterans of the gospel and reverend akila is going to speak over your life just receive these are men that have been helped by God in various capacities and we trust the workings of God upon their lives and they're going to be making declarations. Reverend Akila will just speak over your life and Apostle Goodhart is going to make that declaration and then we'll just wrap up. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name. Our Father, we thank you for this moment we share in your holy presence. Thank you for the word that has gone forth that will not return back void. May there be now a performance of your counsel which we have received tonight in the name of Jesus. I pray God grants you enlargement to receive more of his blessings, more of his word, in the name of Jesus. By this declaration, we speak forth. Every Red Sea standing in front of you, let it now split in the name of Jesus. By the power of God, we command you to walk through dry land, to arrive in your promised land in the name of Jesus. Every divine equipment it takes to bring to pass
the performance of the counsel of God on your life. Receive in the name of Jesus. By the workings of his great spirit, we bring your way the very resources that it takes to fulfill all his counsel for your life in the name of Jesus. By reason of the combined anointing in this place, now we pray, may your heavens remain perpetually open. May angels ascend and descend on your matter in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, it takes only one encounter to change the life of any man. We believe that by the instrumentality of your word tonight your sons and daughters in this arena and the multitudes across the nations have had a definite encounter to bring about a change in our lives father thank you for divine suddenlies from the first day of august in the year 2021 we decree and declare the change has come upon your people in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As your hand came upon one Elijah and guaranteed divine acceleration, guaranteed divine impetus, guaranteed divine speed, and gave such a one divine advantage. By your hand that has come by the release of your word, we decree and declare divine advantage upon this house in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By your mercy, let the remaining five months of this year be the best of this year in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We decree and declare that the sound of jubilation, the sound of celebration, the sound of rejoicing, will abide abound in our homes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the power of the speakings of your blood, we decree and declare no occasion for tears, no occasion for sorrow, no occasion for fears. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody clap those hands. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now just standing still under this anointing, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, according to the measure of grace, the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom that the Lord has so lavishly brought upon this ministry, I decree even as we have received from those who have gone ahead of us, in the name that is above all names, receive from tonight the spirit of wisdom. Receive an impartation of the spirit of wisdom. Let it begin to manifest as extraordinary results in your life. The grace to make quality superior decisions that move you forward receive that grace in the name of Jesus by this impartation every mountain and every obstacle that stands before you in the name that is above all names we declare it shattered right now because you have believed I declare that you will begin to see it happen now That everyone around you will know for a shorty that you encountered the spirit of wisdom tonight. Yeah. Hear me. In your place of prayer, as you meditate, many of you, the Holy Ghost will come to you like a mighty rushing wind. He will show you the secrets of your destiny. He will reveal to you the strategies and the blueprint for the next level of your life. In the name of Jesus. And I declare that under the influence of the spirit of wisdom, may 10 years be put in one month. Under the influence of the spirit of wisdom, may 10 years be put in one month. That by the end of August, 
many of you would have made tremendous destiny advancements in the name of Jesus Christ oh may your ears hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walking in it and that you find rest by it for your souls in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord will give you a wisdom he will give you a mouthpiece that no one can gain say nor resist in the name of Jesus Christ in your place of work your homes your ministries may men say what wisdom is this in the name of Jesus Christ the mighty works that accompany the spirit of wisdom may they begin to happen in your life from tonight and the rewards that follow wisdom in the name that is above all names may those rewards come upon you and overtake you in the name of Jesus Christ father we agree as a family of faith and we agree as the body of Christ over this city over this nation over this continent that in a fresh dimension let there be an outpouring and a manifestation of the manifold wisdom of God according to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 to the intent that now let it be revealed by the church to principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God Lord this wisdom will be revealed in politics and governance and leadership and finances and relationships and career in the name of Jesus Christ every aspect of the believers life will begin to excel on account of this baptism with the spirit of wisdom receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen let's honor and celebrate the servants of God thank you sir thank you for lifting thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting my hands. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my hands. The greatest wisdom that a man can show is to run to the fountain of wisdom himself. The Bible says, Thou art the fountain of wisdom. It says, In thy light we see light. Anyone who is not led by the fountain of wisdom is still in darkness. There are people here following online, and there are people scattered within this auditorium and all the auditoriums down to the basement. Some of you may be saying, Apostle, I have heard you speak, and I know that I need an encounter with Jesus, the fountain of wisdom. Or there are some of you who are saying, I love Jesus with all my heart, but as it is right now, I need to rededicate my life, my ways to him. You may have come from far and near. Let's minimize movement. I'm about to make the altar call. Wherever you are, we have just a minute or two for you. I'd like you to run and just come and stand here as we celebrate the Lord for your life. It is because of you the Lord put this meeting. Do not wait for someone to come win that war tonight. Are there people coming? Celebrate them as they come. Celebrate them as they come. Anyone, listen, don't sit back and say, um, I, I think I am all right. The moment, listen, the moment Jesus is not Lord of your life, you cannot access wisdom. Celebrate them as they come. Koinonia is this the best you can do run to Jesus who is the fountain of wisdom the Bible says if any man lack wisdom let him ask of the Lord the first wisdom is to receive the free gift of his life translating you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son if you're still coming come quickly if you're still coming, come quickly. Young and old alike, come to Jesus. For as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away, the Bible says. All the overflows, just stand in front of your screen for time. And those following you who is following in your home, your office, your living room, 
I'd like you to be prepared to pray this prayer also. I salute every one of you for coming to Jesus. He never sends people away. That you have come to him is proof that you are not a rebel. Rebels don't come to Jesus. They run away from him. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand, every one of you standing in front. And I'd like you to say this prayer after me. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus is here. Say after me, Lord Jesus. If you're joining them, please quickly come. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. And I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Tonight, I declare that you are and you remain my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life now and forever amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you for this ones you have brought them by your spirit they have come to the fountain of wisdom Jesus himself I decree and declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus from tonight the Lord gives you a new beginning and I decree and declare that you are recipients of the life of God you are part of the family of faith and from today I declare that you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen thank you for making this wonderful decision now there are counselors waving the placard there I'd like you to please just follow them and there'll be a few people who will just talk to you Koinonia please celebrate them celebrate every one of them the little one someone just help them make sure that there's someone watching over them praise the name of the Lord hallelujah now Please, I, I intended announcing this before. I, I don't know how I forgot. Um, from today, we'll make it a point of duty. The first, the first Koinonia service of every month. Uh, I know that we always fast, but the first Koinonia service of every month, by the grace of God, automatically will be waiting upon the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. This is for our spiritual health. is is part of the training process to help us build capacity. Praise the name of the Lord. So, um, because we didn't do that today, we'll do it next week. Next week, you fast, you can break anything from one to because of time. I know that it's usually a tedious time. Those who can stretch it into the evening, why not? The reason why we fast is because the Bible recommends it to help us to access the spirit of revelation. It's part of the spiritual training process. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And then do well to make sure that you do not come alone bringing as many people who need an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the living God. The Lord bless you. The testimonies from your life will show in Jesus' name. After the grace, please do well to just greet one another on your way out. And I want you to watch your steps so that you don't injure yourselves. Have you been blessed tonight? Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let it rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and see you on Sunday. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.